in a world where seven people will play a game like never before. everybody how's everybody doing tonight yeah this is the good, audio man. dungeon Woo! i'm tony hansen your host joined by the rest of the audio dungeon crew ross pataro dan isgro damian yes. scro brooke armstrong vinnie pro tom kakosa and once again our special guest steve kraus how's everybody doing what's up guys all right hey excellent good, how you doing Woo! What's happening? it is another week with the quarantine 20. <laughs> So, uh, Steve, is your third time on Audio Dungeon? Uh, yeah. How's it feel to be a third timer? Uh, kind of like a, a, a unsure if I'm gonna die at any given moment. It's like that, you know. It's, <laughs> I, I feel like the red shirt, and I'm just waiting for it. But I, I love it so far. You guys, this is this is a lot of fun, and the community is absolutely amazing. So, come on, Steve. Your character's not even wearing a shirt right now, or armor. <laughs> That's, true. That's true. That's true. He's just kind of like, yeah, let me at him. Let me kill everything. And he's just one little god is going go and gone. <laughs> Guys, um, so some great news uh, this week. Uh, we hit our 10,000 follower milestone. Ooh. So thank you so much for everyone supporting us. Really appreciate it. Uh, we've been trying to truck to 10,000 for a long time, and we finally, finally made it. Um, so a lot of these going on, uh, guys. The Gleam uh, giveaway is up. Um, Jarrett Woods is this week's winner, so congratulations to Jarrett Woods. All right. And, uh, hey. Hey. Once we're once we're out of the quarantine, you'll be you'll be uh, getting your gift, and we appreciate uh, you joining. Um, so there's a lot of cool things happening right now. Uh, the coolest thing is that everyone has been talking about on the, the chat. I mean, sending messages in, saying that they want a way to contribute during the during the show because there's a heavy amount of people that are uh, viewing the show after the fact. So um, they want to they want to have a way so they can contribute through the week and then see their contribution go into the show. So um, on the website, it's pretty much it's actually ready to go right now. Uh, but I would say don't visit the website right now. Maybe visit it after the show. Uh, there is now that access to do that on the website, which is theaudiodungeon.com. And it's, it's, it's actually really awesome because you can actually go, go right on and um, you can uh, pull up the website and you can choose a character. Almost all the characters are up. And you can actually uh, trick out and tweak a very specific um uh, enhancement that you want to give one of the characters. And some of them are, are kind of wild, and I'm going to be adding more and more as the days go on. So all different ways to get involved and to see your your uh, ideas get into the show. Um, so check it out. It's on theaudiodungeon.com. I've just overhauled the entire website. It, it looks really cool, and I'm excited for everyone to get, get involved with it. Um, so yeah, that is that. Uh, guys, Patreon is up. Don't forget Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com slash Audio Dungeon. There's a lot of great things in there, including uh, access to our after show Dungeon Talk. Uh, Steve, uh, our guest, has been with us the last uh, two weeks, and he'll be there, I imagine, today with us as well. And um, we talk about all sorts of things. That is uh, about the episode, what we thought, what we can't believe happened. And it's usually something crazy happening, like Brooke's about to die, like almost every week. So uh, you always want to <laughs> you always want to tune in for that. Um, so, um, last week, guys, let's get right into it. Last week was, um, very interesting because, uh, the party split up and then the party really split up. So last <laughs> week, <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. So, so last week you guys brought down the necromancer and, um, and, uh, then a few of the, a few of the guys made a decision that actually would change, um, the direction of the story which for me at least as a dm so uh some of you that saw that the the vortex in, in the middle of the temple was getting brighter and brighter and and try to find an escape and then chose to go through the portals in fact a lot of people went through the portals so um in fact almost everybody went through the portal <laughs> so uh the other three people that that, that are left is Hogar, Dan's character, Findalar, Tom's character, and Thistle, uh, Vin's character. And the three of you are behind. 
Uh, the good news is that the, from the three people stay behind, Vin and Tom, you guys actually recovered the um, the crystal soul crystal for the necromancer, and then uh, Vin intelligently or stupidly put the we don't know which put put the um, the rod into oh, sorry, sorry, sorry to say it backwards the soul crystal into the rod and combined them and then you guys saw the purple light going around the rod then you guys went up top to where hogar was and then hogar uh, trying to help um uh vin make a decision as we saw the video made by sai saba which was amazing by the way sai <laughs> of just Vin Vinny having a breakdown emotionally <laughs> and, and uh uh, mentally and spiritually, every possible, trying to decide what to do, and then Hogar just said, "I'll help you," and then took the rod, put the rod into the light that was actually now reinvigorated and coming out of that vortex, and turned the light from amber to purple. And that is where we stopped. So a, a large part of the group walked through the portal and is now in the city of Solst, in front of, in, in like a huge throne room, and is surrounded by um, by guards, like wizards, and uh, the three, the rest three of you guys are still in the uh the, the uh, temple and the last very very last thing that happened is the second that hogar put that light uh, and put the rod into the um to the light and turned it up uh, purple uh out of the vortex that was in the middle of that whole light came jacques with a beard kind of like vinnie pro's quarantine beard if anyone <laughs> shows that beard <laughs> it's a serious beard it's happening it's happening and uh and also next to him came out of that vortex is master lane the monk and this is, for those of you that are not familiar, Master Lane is, is this NPC character that's going to be played by a real person whose name is Lane, and you're going to learn about him when he comes on the show. Uh, but since we're in quarantine, it's kind of hard for me to get on right now. But um, his character has been doing a lot of interesting things. He's been around for maybe about five, six episodes. So he's, he's, he's a monk, and he's kind of like a, like a protector, like a guardian type of monk. Uh, so that is the story uh, that is going on right now. Uh, thank you so much for, we have 200 uh, stars from Scott Weber. Let's not forget for three weeks in a row now Thank Sparky you. has a Thunder Wave ready to cast at a second's notice. Uh, we will cast it today. Call it out, Scott, and we'll I'll cast it for you today. Thank you for the 200 stars. Mm -hmm. Let's say hello to everybody in chat, and then let's get right into some tabletop. Uh, Jackie Shaw, what's going on? Lauren Hicks. Uh, Han, what's going on? Han has to go. Jared Woods, you won, Jared Woods. Congratulations. Sai Sa Whoa. Sai Saba gave... Thank you. A 9,880 stars. Wow. Ooh. Lion healing wow. uh, and re rolls for the totem. Um, that's amazing. Uh, wow. How many uh, re rolls? Lion's healing. That? That's How a many? lot of re rolls. A lot. <laughs> we were running low. We need them. I would, have to, uh, I, would have to raise, I would have to raise the re roll because a lot of re rolls come in. Size, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, thank Jonathan thank Willis, thank what's going on? Uh, Todd, what's going on? Let's say thank you to all the staff members that help us out right now. Uh, Percival Fairweather, uh, Todd Heaney, uh, Justin Saratrick may be out there. And everyone else helping. Thank you to our sponsors, Fancy Grounds, Nord's Game, Nord Games, uh, Norse Foundry, uh, Master Monk, and Phoenix Studios. Um, Al Diffidel, what's going on? Tim Shanks, Martin, what's going on? Rude Sons, that's cool. Robert Johnson, what's going on? Uh, Scott Weber, official hello. Marlon Johnson, Jeff Sanford, Oni, what's going on? Uh, let's see who else we got here. Lee House, what's going on, Lee? Lee's help, helping out today. Good to see you. Lee, if you guys are not familiar with Lee House, he's a very uh, prominent member of the D&D community. He's on a lot of different shows. Definitely follow him because he's always uh, doing something very interesting and appearing on this show and that show. Uh, we have to get Lee on the Audio Dungeon soon, actually. Um, yeah. Let's see. John Barry, what's going on, John? Tim Shanks, what's up? Lee House gave us 100 stars. Thank you, Lee. Appreciate that. Hey. Derek Luxton, uh, Dina Anchor, what's going on? Uh, Michael Armstrong, what's happening? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> and that is it. I'll see you now. Teresa, oh, Teresa Johnson and Emily Dell. Ooh. Jackie Shaw gets 1,000 stars. Rerolls to be used to force Tony to reroll when needed to be decided by Dan. By me. Wow. Ooh. Awesome. Show. So wow. Jackie specifically wants to get me. She specifically wants Dan to get me. Uh, <laughs> oh, Jackie girl. How many how many rerolls is that though? That's two rerolls. I'm 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 actually gonna have to raise the rerolls thing because uh, we're having we're getting which is amazing. We're getting so much support for the rerolls, but it, it is affecting the game in a huge way. So I might have to raise it a little bit. But uh, right now you got a lot of rerolls from Sai. He gave you the he gave you the healing enchantment, which is four d eight. 
So you guys have that in the totem. Uh, Rob, he gave another um, 4,880 for uh, re-roll. Uh, so if you calculate that, and then 1,000 is two more re-rolls from that. So that's two, four, six, eight, nine. It should be about 11 re-rolls. 11. Okay, total. that brings us up to Add, added 15, 15 total now. And you have that, um, and, they, and you have the, t the, the enchantment healing. And there's so, that, um, there's the two special Dan Tony rerolls, or those, those are separate, right? Yeah, oh, that's, what she, that's what you, I'm sorry, you have, thir you have 13, and you have the two oh. from, for okay. that. So 13 general and two Dan Tonys. Two are designed to, to screw me up. Um, <laughs> Okay, guys, how are you feeling before we start this episode? You guys know where you back where you are in the story. How are you feeling? Terrible. Oh, Just I'm terrible. nervous. My character's not. I'm pooping myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't even Lovely. know. I don't know where to begin this week. I have no <laughs> idea what, where to go, what to do, what's happening. I, <laughs> That's I a beautiful know. thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> we talked about this. It, in dungeon talk but that's remember that's kind of how it's supposed to be like your your guy is on a quest he's not he's not a veteran you know he's not a veteran hero it's the first time he's like coming into like possible hero state and it's chaos so that's kind of what it should be if you think about it yeah but, okay so guys I, so I, uh I, God. yeah no i but like i don't know i mean Jacques is back master lane is here I mean, is, is there anything left for us? Well, I guess we could discuss this in game, but I don't even know if there's anything left to do where we are. I don't know how we're going to catch up to them if the portals are changing. I don't. Do we even want to do that? Is that even a good idea? That's definitely, um, definitely uh, in-game talk. So that's those are great yeah. questions. Uh, before we go, Scott Weber, thank you for 1,000 stars for Arky and Sparky rerolls. All right. So uh, Rob, put that in there. So one reroll for Arky and one for Sparky. And Jeff Sanford, thank you for 1,000 stars. Two more rerolls just for S and Gs. Oh. All right. Yes, S and Gs. Two more rerolls. Okay, it's it. Two more. All right. Got them all, Rob? Yep. Guys, if you give any, any uh, startup donations and I don't see it, just remind me. Uh, uh, I apologize if I do. And don't feel bad to annoy me about it. Okay? Because it is, when I'm, when I'm DMing, sometimes it gets hard. Let's get going, guys. Um, which group should we do first? Um, I think we're gonna go with Hogar and um, Thistle and Findalar. Uh, Guys, you're all together. Uh, you're standing right behind um, Hogar, who ha actively has the rod inside the uh, the light, and he's basically like just shaking. He basically holds it on, and um, behind you, out of the vortex in it, has just jumped out um, Jacques and Lane. And they fall to the ground, and they seem to be either completely unconscious or stirring because this is we're right in the moment when that happened. Okay, you guys can take from there. It's just the three of you. Uh, there are millions of zombies that are all below you, and they're not they're not uh, currently uh, attacking everything else. But the zombies seem to be very unfocused ever since the necromancer's um, vessel was, was was destroyed. Okay, role play, guys, go for it. Jock, I, I immediately okay. okay. I did. <laughs> Jock, where were you? Uh, okay, you, you talk, start talking to Jock, and no answer. He's on the floor. Who, I immediately turned who to is this face. other person? Fizz? What are you asking? Thistle? I have no idea who you know that who is. is. Why, why did everything turn purple? I'm more concerned about that. That is not good. No, no. No, what exactly. color is not good. <laughs> what color is the rod? Uh, the rod is now, ever since the light turned purple, you see the rod is actually going back towards Amber. Uh, also, well, guys, uh, Sai Saba gave us a Dwarven King, uh, Dwarven King's Enchantment, which you guys have activated now. If you don't use it, I'll uh, make it carry next week, but uh, thank you, Sai, for reminding me. You guys have Dwarven King, which I think is, an, is Endurance, which may be like a DR of like four. Um, somebody check it out let me know. Okay, so yeah, the rod is, is Amber. It's turning amber and and less purple by the second. Okay, all right, that's good. That's not good. Are we re-releasing this guy? What what's going on right now, Finn? Finn, what is going on? Tom, I hear nothing. Her <laughs> <laughs> face for me is hilarious right now. She's just like, what? Tom, there is no no audio from you, buddy. Because, wait, did you say that the rod's turning less 
purple and more amber or the opposite? Um, well, you're not there, but the rod <laughs> no, no, no. is <laughs> the rod is turning more amber and less purple. Oh, no. Thank you. Tom, if you can't talk, if you want to, want to type, uh, just type in. Uh, let me know if you're still having a problem, Tom. What's going on? We're not hearing um, anybody. I got the uh, Dwarven King's Fortitude. Uh, oh, I, just, yeah, we I just heard you. you for a second, Tom. Anything? No? Yes? Yes, okay, you're, yes you're good now. All right. So, um, sorry about that. Uh, I was having a computer problem before we went on, and I guess they continued, even though it didn't appear that way. So, um, Tony, first of all, I, I have seen Master Lane before, so I recognize who he is. Um, yes, you guys all rem remember him vaguely uh, when I told you guys um, about what happened to you when you were in the first Necromancer Lesser Temple. Uh, when you guys were knocked out, uh, you came back in the care of uh, some of the Red, Red City's people. And while you were in and out and still in a, in a bad state, you were seeing uh, Master Lane, who is a monk, bald head, uh, has like white and like like gold robes, similar to Alabaster's. And uh, he was talking um, around around you guys, walking around the room when you guys were, um, you know, uh, affected by the fear. So you do recognize him. Okay. Okay, Hogar, Thistle, what are you guys doing? Anything? Always, I'm gonna switch. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm really concerned about the light turning purple. Um, I am happy that the rod is turning back amber, which is good, I guess. But the, rod, the, the light, the vortex itself, becoming purple. I'm, I'm hoping we're not like re-releasing him. Uh, do we, do we want to make this so that the rod is completely amber again, and that's all purple? But no, I don't, I don't know if that's the case. Um. Tony, do we still see zombies like going in and flying up? Um, ever like that since... was happening before, right? Yes. So ever since the uh, the vessel, well, you weren't there when you were, you were down below in the in the thing. So Holgar would have seen this, but the zombies became just, this seemed to become like less focused, and I guess you would I would say more independent. And there are still a lot of them like funneling in through the through the light. Whether they're coming from below or they're coming from that vortex, you're not really sure. Okay. Um. Uh, well. Do guys, do we have anything left here to do? Um. Well, I would like to get the rod back to fully amber. I mean, if holding it in the in, in the light will do that, that's probably good. But I don't know what that means for, um, the necromancer. Are we re-releasing him? I, I like. I don't. I don't know. No. I mean, there, there is no crystal anymore because his crystal was actually absorbed into the rod, so he doesn't have a a a, a, a and he his soul is someplace. We never actually destroyed his soul. We destroyed him. Um, can we see where like this light from this this beam is going into, or is it like the light comes from the vortex? And it goes straight up into the out of the temple and up beyond that where you could see. Oh, jeez. Um, okay, I'm going to jump over to the other, other group right now. So let's go over to the other group. This is um, basically everyone else. This is uh, all the NPCs except for Jacques. Um, this is uh, Brooke, Scro, uh, Rob, Steve, um, Sparky, Lump, and like everybody. I think that's I think that's everybody. Uh, you guys are. Who's your name? Master no. Lane is not here. He's back. With no, Master Lane is back with them. Master Lane and Jacques are back with the other guys. Uh, so you got you guys are actually inside this large. Uh, looks like a like a royal hall of, of some sort. It's very large. It's probably about fifty feet in height. Um, all all like clay colored stones everywhere in here, at least in this room. And you see on one side of you is this large uh, balcony that goes out to this entire beautiful and like magical looking city. In the harbor, you see uh, ships with uh, yellow sails. And um, you guys have been, you heard one word from this guy who was uh, who basically some, some sort of uh, authoritative figure who's sitting in a, 
a chair, like a throne in the other side of the room, and you're surrounded by wizards right now. The gateway you came through, which is one of, one of the doorways that you went through from the, uh, the temple, uh, has been closed. And uh, you guys are, like I said, surrounded by these troops. If you can role play, what do you want to do? And Lillian and Fluffles, uh, according to last commander, are heading Please. over to the wizard in the chair. Um, they wouldn't be able to move without all of you, so they may probably take a, take a couple of steps towards it to go. But you see, the guards all around you are kind of usher all of you together. So basically, is, is is are you guys moving or are you not moving? Well, it's last action I had was I had sword in hand, so I'm sitting there like <laughs> <laughs> it's. But now I'm surrounded. I have a whole bunch of wizards around us, right? <laughs> All right, we do. Uh, All right, well, here we are in greetings. your home. Greetings, wizards, greetings. We are visitors from the Red City. <laughs> visitors, huh? <laughs> That's the term you're gonna use. We're, Ar Arky, maybe we should say we're messengers. Yes, indeed, we are messengers. We bring an important message from the Red Knight himself. That's from the Red, from the Red Knight himself. Yes, the Red Knight himself. <clears throat> we demand to speak to your leader. Take us to your leader. <laughs> what is their reaction? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that is their reaction. Is, where's Tony? <laughs> oh, Tony dropped off. Cool. Uh, who wants to be yeah. DM? Oh, man. <laughs> I, tried, I tried my hand at it last week. It, it didn't succeed so well. I mean, we're still okay. here. All <laughs> 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 uh, right. So, um, okay. This is a, so here we are from the really... Red City. We've got messages to deliver. They yeah. have some that are very different than mine. I can guarantee you that. But um, we're here on uh, uh, peaceful terms. Uh, we didn't know exactly where we were going. So you'll have to forgive the uh, the coarseness of me presenting my blade. We should have made the left at Albuquerque. Yeah, right. <laughs> what's, what's in Albuquerque? <laughs> what she said. Yeah. <laughs> So quiet. I, yeah, People are dropping off. Uh, but we dropped off no. What is going on? This is what the wizards are doing. It's getting crazy, guys. We're getting picked off one by one. Uh, uh, here we go. Oh, somebody's back. Oh, oh. Right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hi, Tom. Tom! You can hear, you can hear, me, you can hear me and everything? Do you want yeah. to go into the, the 10K giveaway thing again? We'll, we'll go over that real fast. We could, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Sure. Okay. <laughs> for everybody that's still with us while we're waiting for the DM to get back from his technical difficulties, I wish we had one of those technical difficulty screens up right now. Right? <laughs> um, so much better. Being, being that we hit 10,000 followers on Facebook, we're going to be giving away a Oracle Dice Box from Master Monk Gaming. Um, they actually are a woodworking uh, company that specializes in D&D &D and role-playing game uh, accessories. Specifically, dice, uh, dice trays, dice boxes, um, holders, towers, etc., etc., etc. We have one of their demo models that they gave us to review for them, and we are going to be giving that away along with a full dice set for the for the 10K giveaway. Wow. Uh, we're going to have a link. I believe it's up in the comments section right now, so you can go over there and take a look at that and uh, join in on that contest. We might actually have a few additional goodies in there from some of our other sponsors as well, which include Nord Games, uh, Norse Foundry, and Fantasy Grounds. So there might be something in there from them as well. we got to discuss that still. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely the Oracle Dice Box. So go take a look at that. Go take a look at the review we did on it and head over to Master Monk's Kickstarter page where they're actually running new uh, Kickstarter for the Oracle Dice Box, which is actually a beautiful piece of uh, carpentry, if you ask me. So, oh, and then Tony's back. Hey, guys, what's up? I'm back. I had a fight off with hey, mom, and now I survived once again. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. He's Tony, learning new Tony, do you... every week to fight you. Yes. <laughs> Tony, do you have your cell phone near your speaker? Because I'm getting some kind of like weird feedback here. Yeah. It's really uh, cool. uh, there's, yeah. there's no there's no speakers on right now. I think I think there's a cell phone near something. Yeah. Here. 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 I feel like yeah, it originated oh, okay. with you, Tom. It's 
Yeah, it sounds like you're trying to fight off the Matrix guy, like, in, overtaking you. That's my you. mom. That's my mom. Mm. She's learning to infiltrate uh, in many Smith ways. Trying to get oh, yeah, I, I'll show you what that looks like. <laughs> <laughs> I'll watch it. That's what it looks Perfect. like. Perfect. <laughs> the best impression Tony's ever done. Uh, <laughs> really? I like to like thank wow. the fans for supporting me and uh, the Matrix for making the Maker Matrix and um, Brooks' mom. mom. <laughs> <laughs> your mother. <laughs> I want to thank your mom. Okay, so uh, <laughs> let's let's begin. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, we lost. We got like zapped in in uh, house here. So, but everything else stayed on. So, thank God. Um, Okay, guys, so you are being ushered away. Is anyone resisting the usher? Are you kind of like well, going with the flow or no? When they come, I yell, I shout out, at, we are messengers from the Red City and demand to speak to your leader. <laughs> so you yell that to the guy around, d down, standing on the uh, sitting on the throne or yelling it to the guards right here? Just the guys right in front of us, you know. Okay, they don't say anything. They keep just kind of pushing you forward. How pushy are they being? Like pushy, pushy, or more like they have they have their hands out, and then if you're absolutely not gonna go, you let me know if you're gonna resist, and then they're basically gonna probably put their hands on you. You can tell. In which direction are they leading us? Towards the guy in the chair? Yes. Exactly. Oh, okay. Well, they're following your commands. This is good. Yes. This is good. <laughs> we go willingly. <laughs> I go willingly. Yeah. Okay. I anyone? Walk forward. Okay, so no, it sounds like no one puts up resistance, right? No. No. Not me. This worked Thank well you. for us the last time that guards, or the first time that guards surrounded us and told us that we were going to go someplace. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you guys are being ushered across. This is giant room. You guys get about halfway through. It takes you about, um, probably like 30, 40 seconds to get, like, get about halfway. And, uh, as you get halfway through, all of a sudden, you hear this strange noise. Like a, it sounds like a lightsaber if it was turned to like infinity level of volume, and uh, everything just kind of like vibrating with like a like a staticness to the air, and you see outside this this huge uh, balcony, this window, the entire sky goes purple. You see everyone out. You hear you see people in the ships like looking up. Anywhere you can see it, just everybody's looking up, startled, trying to figure out what's going on, and it just feels wrong. It feels like it feels evil. It feels strange. Uh, role play. Well, there's no reason to put on a firework show on our account. What is that? <laughs> I think that's uh, what... Was this the message, guys? Is this the message? It's... <laughs> Messi, you said that this is... You called death. Have you... Any of you uh, ever seen that before? Hey, hey, you, guardsman, I just tap right on the shoulder. You there, as I point at you in my bloody shirt. What is that? Are you, are you asking one of the guards? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have just tap him on the shoulder if he's right there. The guard that look, is looking past you, uh, hold, holding um, some sort of like long, like, spear with, like, a, the, the end of the spear is, like, crackling with, like, a magical energy. And you okay. see them look almost, like, wide mouth and um, wide-eyed. Looking, looking past up. us out across the balcony over the bay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, they see what is happening. The necromancer is defeated. The rod repowered and once again in our grasp. You are defeated, Archmage. Accept it. You hey, see, uh, um, we should get out of here while everybody's looking at this uh, yeah. sky thing. You see the that the, the the figure in the throne kind of uh, stands up and uh, makes his way to the to the balcony partially, like looks looks outside, and then calls one of one of his uh, advisors close, and you see some people running up. You hear, you hear the word necromancer on, on his tongue, and he's basically just saying a couple of different things, but it's it's a little too quiet for you to hear. I'm gonna I'm gonna try this. Uh, uh, screw it. Sword in hand, uh, like with a with the uh, the butt of the sword in one hand, break through <laughs> the guards to head towards the balcony. Is that possible? Anything's possible. Who has prop? Wait, props? Props? Yeah, dude, I have <laughs> props. I'm a freaking robot. I player, have man. cell phones. That's wow. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Make a roll. Um. Let's see, you're trying to do, just push by them. Just give me a, um, give me a strength check. 16. Total? Yeah. Okay, straight. Uh. Okay, so you start pre- 
Uh, okay, okay, is wait, he wait. going towards the guy in the throne or away from the guy in the throne? Towards the balcony where it's everybody balcony, is yeah. going. But with the primary, well, I, I'm not going to discuss all internal right, motives, right. but yeah, you'll see. Okay, so um, right. you push, you actually push through, and you make your way through, through like the the group of them for a second, and you breaks out, and you run out there and towards the the balcony. What do you want to do next? Uh, I I just wanted to get free of them. Use that as a ruse turn around and now how distracted are they and did everyone else see that i was able to break free of these idiots now that they're completely just i would want to run also i run out of there as well is the uh is the path back to the portal clear tony the portal's been closed if you remember from remember from last week oh so the portal yeah Yeah. but i run out of there i run past them strength strength check also if you try anybody who tries to break out roll strength check now because everyone is very distracted by this all right i'll break out i'm 16 you said Oh, it doesn't matter. No, that's what he rolled. 18. 17. Okay. Uh, 16. 16. Okay. Okay. So all of you basically get out. You guys just fuck them. The guards immediately start chasing you, but all of you get out. Let me roll for uh, Sparky and... Sparky rolls a 1. Oh, no. And and Lump rolls 15. So um, everyone gets out except for Sparky. One of them grabs him. The rest of you kind of run, and uh, Sparky's like, No, wait for me! You know what? He you know what Sparky up. does. You know what Sparky does. He's had it saved for three sessions. Yeah, well, I mean, well, it's about to happen now because Scott Weber has been giving me stars for it. Um, <laughs> Sparky, do your thing. <laughs> okay, so you guys run out. Um, well, I'll do. I guess I'll do it. I'll do Sparky now. So Sparky is, is caught freaking out. He goes, no, let me go. Let me go. Like he's freaking out, and then he goes, <laughs> and he does for Scott Weber his thunder wave. He goes, you see a crackle of uh, the sound of thunder and the, uh, the effect, yeah. of, effect of lightning go out and like a ring from Sparky. And let's see how it does. I'm going to amplify it because of his, uh, his, his lightning ability. Okay, so pretty good. So he actually knocks everyone to the ground. All the guards get down to the ground. Uh, some of them are not moving and some seem to be... Some seem to be... Um, just like stirring, like knocked out, you know, knocked their uh, the floor and stunt. Uh, you Let's guys get out of here. You run to the balcony. You all get there really quickly. Um, you see other guards from other parts of the room start to make their way over, but they're very far away. And you see that the this uh, this kingly person or this this, uh, this grand wizard uh, seems to be not very mindful of you guys right now. Like they see you, but they're not. They seem to be treating it as insignificant um all of a sudden as you guys as guys are sitting there by the balcony, you're looking up and uh all of a sudden you see this wave imagine if all of reality had like a wave of like a like like purple uh and bright just coming at you and um rushing in every direction and all of a sudden it hits you you see it hit the water first all the water starts swelling upwards in this giant wave you see the ships some of them get overturned immediately it goes into the uh the city it uh it it's breaking carts and it's smashing buildings. People get get start flying across uh you know um 50 feet this direction that direction and finally it hits you guys, smashes, puts cracks in the walls, cracks in the statues on on, on the sides, knocks everyone to their feet, especially you guys, and um, then in a second it's over. You guys look around and you start just getting up. You see the air is like thick and it, it reminds you exactly of what it felt like to be in the temple. He's now we're here. Go- He's we're gonna go back- here. We're going to go back to the other group right now. Um, so, <laughs> Hogar, Thistle, and Findalar. Uh, you guys are sitting there, and you see at this time, uh, you see the, the amber crystal in the rod is now returned to amber, and you see that the, the purple is basically very powerful, very strong, and just uh, pulsing out of that vortex going upwards. Um, what do you want to do? Uh, so guys, I think we definitely did the right thing, by the way. <laughs> sticking the, or the rod. I think that we're going to definitely not regret that decision at all. Yeah, yeah. But we cleansed the rod. That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, we got to get the rod on our side. We have the rod on our side now. All right. Um, I take the rod back from Hogar and I resheath it. <laughs> um, I give Thistle the rod. 
Yeah. Okay. I take, I take the rod. It's like my one year old trying to take something. <laughs> Hogar, you, you go to. You see him coming for the rod, and it looks like you're going to go give it to him. You try to move the rod out of the light, and you're simply unable to. It seems like like you're trapped. Uh, or at least the rod is trapped within like the light, the vortex. I, I can't pull it away from it? You try to pull it out, and it won't pull. Oh, no. Um. I, guys, I can't move the rod. It's stuck in the light. Oh no. Uh Um Does that mean right. he's feeding off the power of the rod? We got to get this rod out of here. How, um Ah. Uh, <laughs> does uh, does, does Master just like Lane it? know anything? Can we wake him up? Who? If they were inside that vortex or the purple light I think we need to hear from Jacques and Master Lane. Maybe they know something. I go. All right. I, all right. I instantly run over to Jacques and I try shaking him to get him up. Like, wait, wake up, wake up already. Uh, Jacques does not get up. Are you are you shaking Master uh, Master Lane also? I try both of them. Yes, I will try both of them. Master Lane gets up. You see him like opening his eyes. He seems to be, he seems completely out of it. And just looks at you, and looks around, and just starts just starts standing up very slowly. No words, at least that's not at first. I, I remember him, right? Like obviously we remember. You know who he is. You remember that he was there. You know he's a good guy, and you know he led all the paladins and the wizards and the rangers to destroy all the temples, and he did destroy three lesser temples. And then you guys found his group, which was uh, Steve, uh, Steve's paladin, okay. uh, as one of them, and Lillian and Sir Fluffle. I turn around to Master Lane and I like, uh, M M Master Lane, I, I, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you, are you feeling all right? I'm all right. I'm all right. Where, where, where did you come <laughs> from? Where, where, <laughs> is <that> okay? <laughs> Damien, is that a good impression of him? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Lane, Lane again, Lane's yeah, a real person in real life, so he, he's going to be on the show eventually. So I'm, I'm going to do a, a very poor impression of him. Worse than my Morgan Freeman impression <laughs> of Morgan Freeman. Um, anyway, so he's like, "I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right." So where, where, looking... where did you, where did you and Jacques come from? The vortex. It seems to be a pocket dimension that he created for his power. I'm... Inside, where were shadows, creatures with little or no light. It was something I cannot even put into words. What happened here? Uh, well, I think we defeated his physical form, and then we broke his, well, we captured his soul crystal with the rod, and I think we just re-released it on the earth, the, 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 above ground. <laughs> Surface world. <sighs> I'm not sure where we go from here. We have, well, first step, we need to find a way to get the rod back. How do we, we, we can't move the rod. Yes, we need to find a way to get the rod out of that light. So where, where you said the light coming from a pocket dimension? Apparently, we don't have a lot of time, it seems, but apparently inside this pocket dimension uh, he created is almost like a, a well, uh, like a well of power for him. He's uh, taken souls, light, uh, and, and, and put it all into, into this, this place and has basically been fueling upon it for, for energy and power. So whatever he's been doing, he's been using that to kind of um, direct his energy up towards the Red City. Um, so what if we what if we cut off the source? Is that does that sound viable? Like well, it seems to me that if Hogar is holding the rod in, into the light, it seems that he's pulling energy from the rod right now. We need to cease that immediately. I know, but if we close it off down below, that'll release the rod up here. Is it? How do we... Down below is inside the inside the well, so to say. I don't think if we go in there, we'll be able to get ourselves back out. I only get out because Jacques found me. I was literally going insane, losing my mind inside. It's not right. it's not a, a place like here. Um. All right. All right. Um. How how we... big is the light around? About ten feet. I'm sorry. Ten feet. About ten feet. Okay. Finn, can you cast another one of those arcane gates? Uh, huh. I don't know. Um. 
no. Um. No, I can cast one, maybe two spells. And that's it. And that's. Five hundred stars. Five hundred stars from Jackie Scholl. Five hundred stars. To have Hogar do a Hulk yell in Jock's fave. In Jock's oh Jock's face and to wake him up like Iron Man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, Hogar. Okay, here we go. I uh, I, uh, I, 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 switch places. I switch places with him, trying to hold <laughs> on to the. All right, I imagine Jock went near him, or is he right there? Jock's on the floor near where uh, is. Uh, okay. Thank you, Finn. I uh, I hand him the rod, very carefully, okay. very carefully, mm -hmm. ever so gently. You hand the rod to who? Findalar locked on. Okay. Findalar locked on, you grab the rod, and the second that he passes it off to you, you realize that the strength of Holgar was a huge factor in this. And he takes the rod, you you immediately get pulled inside. Uh, this is going to be a fortitude uh -huh. check, a constitution check of 15. Made it. Okay. So you give, you give it to Findalar, and immediately you get thrust forward by a foot, and like you just hold it onto it. Yell so quickly. Hogar, continue. If, if we see, <laughs> if I see him lurch forward, I like grab him by like the, the see the pants, and I kind of like put my little weight into it to see if I can help him. Okay. A little. Okay. <laughs> uh, if you have to make another right. another check, I'll give you a plus two, uh, Tom. Uh, let's Thanks. see what the shares are at. Someone get, let me know what the shares are at. See what pluses they're getting. Uh, Hogar, what are you doing? I run over to Jacques and go right in his face, and I just go. Okay, roll d20, uh, charisma check, and um, add uh, a plus three. Okay. Hey, quarter 20! Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Jacques, Woo! Jacques, Jacques, day, baby. <laughs> Jacques opens his eyes. <laughs> I'm up, I'm up. Uh, what is happening? Are you okay? I think so. I think so. He goes, where's Master Lane? And he, he sees him, gets up. Um, uh, Master Lane puts his arm on Jacques' shoulder. Thank you. Thank you for helping me. Yes, don't mention it. Now we can die together. What is happening? We're trying We're to get the not... rod out of the light. It's stuck. H Hogar, um, I think Finn needs your help over here. And I'm just kind of yeah, like... Yeah. Raced onto the seat of his pants yeah. and hold him. <laughs> Findalar, roll, okay. roll another check. Constitution 15. You got a plus two with. Uh, okay. Unnatural 20. Okay, so you guys hold it on. Oh, God, you go over to help? Yeah, I, I hustle over there. I grab, um, I grab the rod above where Finn's hands are, and I just pull with him. I try to actually physically pull it away from the light. Okay, the roll a string check. Give me above a 20. Woof. Uh, all right, I got advantage on strength checks. I can do this. That's a seven and a 20. You yeah. want another natural 20? No, no, no. It's unnatural 20. <laughs> okay. So uh, you uh, pull. You pull it out. And you see the light kind of like flips back and forth and then straightens out again. And it's all just coming out straight, all purple going up. Uh, but the rod is clear. The rod looks very powerful. Look, it's glowing amber. It's never been this bright before, even perhaps when you uh, triggered it with the uh, the tree. Maybe that was probably the closest you've seen. And that's what you, that's what's happening. What do you guys want to do? Um, Hogar, can I can I put that away now, please? <laughs> yeah. Yes. It looks very, <laughs> very powerful. I tuck, I tuck it in like in between my knapsack where it's holstered normally, and I cover it up. <laughs> Um, okay, you put you put the rod away. Master Lane says, "Is there something we can do with the rod? We need to stop the necromancer." I, yeah, um, I know we need to stop the necromancer, but I mean, we don't even really know how to control the rod. All we kind of do is hope and pray to the people that are inside of it and see if they can do something for us. Um, uh, Richard Wilde is, is mentioning and reminding everybody that you guys have uh, you may have some coins. Uh, let's see who else is coming in. 
Luke Downey says, uh, worse than your Morgan Freeman impression? Everything is worse than that. It is glorious. <laughs> uh, Ernie says, absorbed it into the rod. Richie Wild, Wild says, ask the rod. Maybe ask the rod some questions. Go into the light, go into the well, and smash that smother to, to, to pieces. That's what Scott Weber says. Richard Wild says, do you have, yeah, do you have to collect this coin? Uh, Scott Walters is trying to think of a way to have someone in Oregon do a Carl Sagan impression about star <laughs> stuff. Uh, Charlie Lewis, <laughs> you can do it. Uh, Katie Anderson, what's going on? Uh, Scott, Scott Weber, uh, Sparky's low on spells too. Yes, he is. Um, let's see, Arjuna is just saying hi. Where is Lump? Lump is actually on the other side with the other group in the in Solst, that other that wizard city. Ben Benani, welcome to the stream. Uh, Mark Shank says, tell Jacques to call the collector to put the light. Jacques actually has a coin, and I think the other person who has the coin is Damien Scro. Is that right, Damien? That is correct. I do. Yep. Um, Let's use them both tonight. <laughs> <laughs> both at the same time for the same thing. <laughs> yes. You know what the best part of that is? But either one of the two people would have no idea that the other was doing that. <laughs> yes. That's yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's true. It's a metagame. It's a metagame waiting to happen. Okay, so you guys are, uh, we got, we're going to flip back over to the other group. Uh, you guys are on the balcony. You've just been knocked over to your feet. Um, everyone's been knocked over to your feet. Anyone you see in a distance, including that person I was talking about, the uh, the Grand Wizard. And uh, you see the walls and the structures have basically been cracked by this wave. And as you guys uh, stand up, you see that the, the air is like this, this thick, uh, like dank um, atmosphere. Uh, you guys start standing up slowly. We'll play. Gotta get out of here. Oh my, that is not good. What exits do we have in this area aside from jumping off the balcony and how far down is that? How far down is the balcony? Um, I would say about, a, probably about a hundred feet. And any, uh, from from outside, any view of the necromancer, a small dot in the distance that looks evil? Nothing. Any Nothing. All we saw, all we saw was that purple wave and the effects. The wizard still distracted by what's going on outside? Everyone's right now. We're at the moment where everyone is like on the floor. So you're just like standing up. Uh, oh, Let's get moving. I want to start walking to uh, an exit. I follow Batorius. Let's go, Arky. Okay. Do you go uh, the opposite way of the uh, the balcony? Do you go further in, or do you find a way outside? I, or... I want to leave this building. Yeah, I want to be out oh. of this building. So how do you do that? Uh, I look for an exit. Okay, you look for like one of the hallways to go in. You have to, you have to cross the cross the grand hallway again. The grand hall. Um, Tony, how far away is Sparky from me? Well, Sparky's about, it's about, it's about, right. about a, it's about 100, 200 feet. He's been thrown a bit. Just... Yeah, I'm, I'm a little confused because I felt like we just walked into this building and then it was like a big hall, and now we went back and I'm you're, not you're, sure. You're on one side of the of the hall. Okay. Uh, so how far are we from the entrance that we came in? Uh, the entrance you came in, which was a portal, is which is closed, is somewhat to the um, the bottom center of the, oh, uh, I the thought hall. We, I thought we portaled in outside of this building. I didn't realize we were in the building. No, inside. Um, no. Okay, I'm, okay. I'm going to sprint over to where Sparky is. Abyssia, you were trying to say something? I was saying that we should maybe just climb down from this balcony and put some of our ropes together, but... There's gotta be steps. What's... Okay, so here oh, is um, mine, okay. if you can see this. So you guys, this is the balcony over here. Run this side. And you guys came yeah. in through the one of the portals on the bottom over here. Okay. Oh! So you guys are, you guys are here, and there's a way out here. Here, here, and here's the th the throne. Uh, the guys are all about here. They've been thrown to the floor. And the guards are. Uh, that's what you just indicated. The guards that they're all thrown to the ground. Some seem to be unconscious and not. Or about here, where Sparky was. Why were you guys portaled in? Okay, I wasn't aware that there were three portals there. That's awesome. Uh, are, are, is there any activity in any of those other portals? Um, you don't believe so. Okay. You don't. You don't see anything right now. Did the purple light do anything to the portals that it turned on? No, but the, pur no. the purple light is actually floating in the air and sometimes almost like physical form in front of you. It's almost like you're in the cloud, in like a purple cloud. Now, uh, are any of those 
are any of those doorways or are they all, are all uh, portals like what on the so on the sides you have the uh, these are all halls and they're all large about 20 feet wide okay and they're 20 okay. feet wide and 50 feet high and they just go out to different parts of this gigantic building and these other portals are actually far apart uh, from each other and um from here it looks like none of them are lit so if you're okay. going out it's it's balcony hall 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 okay i want to go to hallway one on the here? bottom yeah yeah okay so you guys are gonna cr kind of cr cut across and go there botorius yeah, makes I... his way spring off yeah. and would follow i go up botorius okay i go first is sparky close by if not i go to where he is sparky's kind of on your way you, you can pick him up okay that's what i do i run to him and just scoop Good. him up and start okay running. he when you run by he kind of gets up you see he sees a little bit hurt by everything and he jumps to you and like climbs on the back and then uh, little with body us, right? dope. yeah lumps with you too lumps with you right now so how he's many, just gonna start running out how many of those guards are in the process of standing up how many of them are paying attention to them who are trying to escape uh the guard the first group of guards are all on the ground and they're not getting up or don't want to get up but some of them are rolling like they're, they're in pain okay uh the other group of uh, surrounding the um, the Grand Wizard is is basically um, just just recovering. So okay, so there's no chance then that these guys are in danger as they try to go through that door, right? Not for, from your perspective. Nothing else that you can see. All right, the rest of you go go towards the door if that's your idea. I'm going to stay here. Make sure that you have a clean uh, a way to go. I'll stay. I'll stay behind. Come with us. Please. I will. I don't plan on dying here. I'm having some of these burn men take me down. No, you go through the door first. Just go. Reed, try to get some clothes. We'll see you later. I'm wearing clothes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Fine. I reach down to some guards and I. Is there armor on the guards by any chance, Tony? Um, no. These are wi they're, they're wizards. So while they are like like um. By some sort of like mage, uh, like like a like a slayer sort of a wizard. They slayer. are not. Uh, <laughs> cool slayer. They are um, not wearing armor. Okay. Uh, no, I, I'm not. I, I don't take anything. I just stand there and I make sure that they can exit. Okay. Uh, you guys run to uh, get outside of the to that hallway and hold on. Oh boy. As you run to the hallway, all of a sudden you run into what seems to be some sort of force field. <laughs> Where are you going? By the red light, I cast divine sense. Show me the evil in this room. All of a sudden, um, which character's name? Reed, right? Reed. Uh, Reed, you start. You, you guys see the force field. Look around, and you see Reed uh, start uh, talking defiantly. And all of a sudden, Reed starts getting lifted up. Yeah. No. <laughs> and the, the rest, the rest of you also get started to get lifted up in place as well. And you no. see the uh, the archmage. Uh, this well, I don't want to say the archmage. Get confused, but this uh, this. Um, Wizard Epic little wizard. The the yeah. Is there any, mo and, is and there any his... mobility at all? Uh, uh, hands. That's about so it. We can do that. Basically, yeah. You see, he's just walking forward. And he's like, you brought this. Whatever you are, working with a necromancer or the Red City, you've applied this curse. And for it, you shall pay. I try and use my jet boosts, uh, uh, my spark jump. Interesting. Uh, does go, it get me go. out of the thing? Uh, intelligence check, roll. While he's rolling, uh, what's the feedback on that divine sense? Detecting evil. Uh, is everyone here? Um, you detect, you do detect evil. Um, it's kind of hard because the evil is everywhere in the atmosphere around you. That's what it wants um, to know, okay. Yeah. So All right, do I, do thank I you. see when I look at him, Tony, with my eyes? Anything... Um, you can see, you see it, uh, that he has a lot of light in him, which also signifies, it's, you can tell he's a very powerful person. Something you know already, but it's kind of confirmed by the, by you looking at him. And it's like a white light, or no? No. No. Okay, great. It's, um... Yeah, you don't have to, okay, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Take All a right, look around, right, right. any of my compatriots, oh, I'm sorry, dude, go ahead. I was gonna say I roll a 12 on the intelligence check. Okay, you start uh, thrusting uh, back and forward. You almost kind of wiggle your way out. Don't. Uh, if you want to use a reroll, you can, but you feel like it almost worked. I'm going to. Okay. Yeah, we got plenty. I'll use a reroll. 17. 17. Okay. So you, you're in different ways trying to get out. 
and all of a sudden, maybe because he's holding a lot of people, or whatever reason, you're actually able to go, and you fly, you fly off like a rocket, and all around the room, and you're free. All right, can I try and head towards the balcony? Yeah. All right, let's go, Sparky. And I try and shoot off the balcony. Okay, so you fly around the room, and then instantly you go, go flying off out of the balcony into the air and you're over the city. Uh, the rest of you, the rest of you guys, what do you want to do? How far away is the wizard? Uh, he's under 100 feet, walking slowly towards you guys. First, I want to see for the First, for what? You got went digital. Okay. Say, say it again. Yeah, yeah Brooke, said, Brooke, can you hear us? Yeah. What? <laughs> 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 I, feel like I, I feel like I just said wrong, and I just heard her feelings. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. No, I can't. I can't see anyone. I can hear you though right now. Sorry. Okay. So, what, what were you saying, Brooke? What are you doing? Um. Oh I, no, I said I was gonna. I was thanking Arky for for scooping us up. <laughs> That's what oh, okay. Oh, yes. Yeah, so you're, you're basically thanking, you're thanking him. I'm gonna. <laughs> so yes. Just as I thought. So, we love you, Arch. Later, guys. <laughs> so the What's... balcony led outside. Huh? I did. I had no idea that that was the thing. <laughs> yes. I had yeah, no I, idea. Remember, I thought it was a balcony on the inside of the building <laughs> that was like people were looking down from a balcony on the inside of this building, but I had no idea that that led outside. I thought I led to a Got you. I never would have went across the whole damn room if I could have. <laughs> down outside in the balcony, like. I would have jumped off that balcony in a second. A hundred <laughs> feet. Yeah, I still would have jumped. I still would have jumped anyway. Yeah, absolutely. I, I would have jumped with you. I thought we, I was gonna ask you to tie the ropes together and go. Yeah, we could have did that too. I would have did any of those things. All right, great. Well, here we are. Any too late now. For being here. Red I had no Red idea that was like an outdoor balcony. Tony? <laughs> no, this is indoor yes. outdoor sports. We're indoor outdoor arena. Is there any possibility that a thrown sword will break that wizard's concentration or release the hold? It's under 100 feet. I, it's a mighty toss, so. I can't tell you. Whatever you want to try, you can try. Uh, I have no other choice. Uh, one person got free. None of them can do anything. Uh, He's looking malicious. That's the only. That's the only thing I, I need. I have no one else to attack around me. Uh, Reed has to do what he has to do. I throw the great sword at the wizard, straight over, hand over, uh, 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 straight overhead. A toss. It's twirling toss. I got a twenty-five to hit if you base it off of a standard melee. Um, otherwise, uh, give me what I need to roll for a uh, range. Okay, so you, well, you roll 25, you said? You achieved 25? 25. Okay, so he's, he's he's walking closer and closer, putting his hand up, holding everybody in. You take you take the sword, you lunge the sword, and a 25 will make it there. You go, <laughs> it starts going right towards him, and all of a sudden you see him go like this, put his hands up, and he stops, and the sword uh, floats right in front of him, and the yeah. rest of you drop to the floor. Ha! Start charging that son of a... Can't curse. Everyone take five damage from, from the fall. You got it. Okay, uh, we're gonna hold off right there for a second. Let's go back to Thistle, Findalar, and Hogar, and Jock, and Master, Master Lane. What do you guys want to do? All right, um, well, we got the rod out of the, 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 the pillar. Now, how do we get out of here? That's that's a whole other problem. Oh, uh, Saisaba, so thank you for four... Used. 465 stars from Sai Saba. Thank you so much, man. Just to, just to donate. Appreciate that. Bye. Sorry, guys. Go ahead. Go ahead, guys. Do we want to use the rod to stop the vortex? To stop the light? Um, uh, we can, but do we really want to use the rod? Because we can't. We kind of just got it charged back up, and we kind of need it to save the tree and close the portals. This is bad. I, Whatever this is, we know it's bad. It's shooting the Necromancer's energy straight up into the, the to the Red City, which Jacques is probably. Jacques walks to uh, the side of the, of the one of the ledges and looks over into the zombies. He's like, "If these zombies are going up top, they, nobody's going to survive. There is there like, there must be like a half a million or more." Yeah. Um. So what's under the portal? Let, let me. I, I'm sorry to keep asking to, to cooperate, so but so the under how the it works portal. is. 
The vortex is there. Under the vortex is just it's just stones. There's, there's an altar there. That's it. Whack the stones, man. See if you can get something. The stone, uh, the stone is as in, as in the stone floor and the stone altar. Under the portal. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. Let's see if we can. Maybe something will happen. Like the stone will rise up and cut off the portal or something. Right. Just to just to remind everybody. This 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 the the road left, Tony. There you go. Perfect. Yep. So, so that's the that's the altar center. That's basically where it comes from. Again, there's a land bridge here, and just the the vortex is sitting on the the middle, and just shoots up and out and up. All right. I mean, I've got. Look out the stars from James Green. Throw the rod into the vortex to stop it and close the portals. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the stars, James. Any other holes? Thank you, James. Mark Shanks says, "Can Finn message?" And Batman says, "What's up, Batman?" It says, "Transmute the stone." Batman. Um, Batman loves that idea. spell. <laughs> can Can you do that, Finn? Can you actually transmute the stone? No. No. All right. There goes that. Uh, Just remember, guys, I, as we've been working through this day, I've been telling you. I know. Uh, I know. I know. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's, it ain't much left. Master um, Lane seems to be uh, more uh, with his senses right now and more, more come to his senses right now and starts to, like, in investigate everything and looking at the, at the throne. Uh, sorry, at the, sorry, uh, at the, uh, the altar and um, looks around. Everyone, everything here is coming from, not from the stone. The stone has nothing to do with me. It's all in the vortex. The vortex is unleashing the energy. He stored his energy for who knows how many years, hundreds of years, a thousand years, who knows. Because, but the energy is coming out and going up. And now it, it's being focused with, it, it seems to be from um, his own life force, from his own soul crystal. So he's in, probably intact in some way. I don't know what's happening above, but... It has nothing to do with the stone underneath. We, all right, so we, we know we need to close this vortex, but how do we close it? Um, oh, I really. I mean, so let's. I mean, hey, hey, we stuck the we stuck the rod on the light. That was a bad idea. Let's make another idea that's not probably a good one. Let's stick it into the vortex itself and see what well, happens. The light coming out of the vortex, so I would have to stick it back yeah. into the light. Also, no, you see under... the, you, you see the light from the vortex actually getting brighter now, and you see it almost like uh, widen. And get stronger and stronger and like re energizes and, and pushes up further. All right, but the, like, the vortex and the light are distinct. I could theoretically stick the rod into the vortex without touching the light again, right, Tony? Um, if very, very careful, very like it's almost like you're doing surgery there. So, yeah, if you're underneath, you could. I don't know, guys. Um, I, I don't know about that. I don't know. I, if I don't we, know either. If we try to um, cast a spell with the rod onto the vortex, will that just make something crazy happen that we don't know what it will be? Well, uh, I, you know you can't cast spells on the rod. Well, we're not. No, yeah, he's, no, he's saying he's like, use the rod. Well, we do know that the drow were able to amplify the healing using the rod. So maybe it can be used to amplify a spell. I mean, I think maybe. Yeah, we could try. Uh, we could try. What do, got, what do you got in your uh, bag of tricks, Finn? <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> uh, hmm. not, let much. Me, <laughs> not much, but let me think, let me think for a moment about how I can try and use what I can do to, uh, even on a hands form to, to, to stop this thing. I mean, other, other than that, we're going to have to try to make contact inside the rod and see if we can... Yeah. The power to be in there, guys. I, I, where is everybody else? Um, I don't uh, know. Don't... Oh, they went through the portal. Wait, he, lo he, looks, the portal? He, he looks back through the portals. He goes, Which one did they go through? They, they seem to be all different. 
They went through portal number one into a throne room. He goes, well, I don't know where this place is, but look at this place. The sky in this, in this forest, it's purple. It's the same. Are you looking at this? Well, when I look at the portal, what do I see? Uh, you see, you see, it's kind of hazy. It's hard to see, but you can see that it's it's uh, like the sky in like some sort of woods, and the sky is all uh, the same kind of pur purple that is coming out. You can't make up too much in the portal, not detail wise, but you can make that out. Um, Finn, I got a crazy idea. Sure. Does does that look like your woods by any chance? Uh, let's take a look. Hard to say. You think not. I mean, come on, the guy's a real estate so. broker for the Elven Woods. I think he would know his territory. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. He, 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 is re he is a real estateman. <laughs> <laughs> he knows every tree in that wood. Um, it's, Only the good ones. Only the good ones. It's um, hard to tell. I I don't think it is, but I don't know for certain. Can we see through these portals clearly now? Because I thought prior no, you couldn't. See through. No, you still can. It's 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 undetailed. Alright. I have an idea, guys, uh, of something I might do that could help if it works. If it doesn't work, I don't know what it'll do, but I could try I something. It. I will I will literally be out of spells then. Well, I'll just yeah. What do you got? Okay. I cast a spell called Private Sanctum. Um where normally it'll be like a ten minute period of time. Um but I can cast a cube overneath over this entire portal that will stop planar travel. And I think that based on what I've done in hell in the past, moving from hell to like the outer world of Andaria um, is moving between planes. Like right. I tried to banish somebody to another plane and that's what happened. So, I think theoretically it could work. I'm hoping that I can enhance the spell with the rod to make it last longer than it normally would, which is like ten minutes. What? I like. It. What? What would the spell do? <laughs> it would block planar travel, so it would block these things from being able to leave hell, which would possibly mean. They would all just be here. So, yeah, that could be a problem. But when you guys, when you guys know you have four minutes of time just debating about what to do, and the, and the light's been yeah. going for that long. Yeah. Just so, all right, I, well, the ride, then. I, I, I wish you luck, buddy. <laughs> that's it. I would say, guys, get near the portals. Um, in case it gets really bad, at least you could escape. And I will try and get out if it does go bad um i'm staying with you i yeah i'm not all right yeah. well, thanks <laughs> all right so tony that's what i'm going to try and do i take the rod and i cast i try and cast through the rod i basically i'm just trying to use the uh the crystal and the rod as like a focal point for my spell um <laughs> the same way I guess you would use a spell component and I cast Private Sanctum uh, in, in, in a shell that would uh, go over the portal. Right? You're, tar you're, uh, targeting, you're targeting the crystal and the rod? No, I'm using the crystal and the rod as a focal point. Like, kind of like, like as if like it were a spell component to like to, to uh, activate a spell. I'm trying to, like that's, the, that's my mindset. I said I don't know how to do it. Like I'm trying to say, like, okay, like this is I'm gonna pass the spell through the rod. Is my kind of like my thought process behind it? Okay, and, and, and tell me in, in one sentence, say exactly what you're hope, you're trying to do. What's your goal? My goal is to cast private sanctum, which is really a cube. Uh, then I'm gonna make it uh, 15 feet on each side, which I think will encompass the enlarged beam of light right now. And if I, I can make it up to 100 feet on each side. So I, I, if, it, if I think 20 feet is what is necessary, that's what I'll do. Um, but I'm going to cast Private Sanctum in a cube over the entryway to the portal, over the over the uh, 
over the portal, over the beam of light, and block planar travel. That's the goal of this cube. So basically, any energy that's coming up can't leave this plane. Gotcha. Okay. Um, you cast your spell. Make an arc arcana check. Twenty. Twenty. You um, you cast a spell. You try to block everything in. You feel like that the the, it, the magic is too powerful. All you've done maybe is you've slowed it down a bit. Uh, okay. but ultimately, and you can tell that from like how you're you're um you're paying attention to the magic and the spell you're casting. Um, ultimately negligible. You're unable to do anything you're trying to do. Okay. All right, guys, that didn't work, and I'm officially out of spells. So anything that we're gonna do now, guys, you're five you're five minutes in the room uh, with the with the energy going upwards. We're gonna go back to the other group. Um, you guys just fell back down to the ground. Uh, you guys are still in that grand hallway. Um, Rob, you uh, flew outside with Arky. Where are you flying to, Rob? Um, I'm gonna fly out and look for a. Head over the streets. Is there like a kind of a clearing or some sort of spot where I can land? Uh, you you can land on top of a building. You can land in the street somewhere. It's that that won't be too hard to find. Okay, so we we'll, I go down to the streets and land in the street. Okay, you land you land on the middle of the street. Um, people, every, everyone's shocked and paying attention to you, uh, but pe people that are near you kind of get scared of you and don't understand what you are. <laughs> Um, I ignore them and just start sprinting. Sprinting Spar down. Sparky on top of you is like, nothing to see here, just look away, Don't everything is fine. <laughs> I'm just going to rely on everyone's confusion to get away. Okay, where are you going? Are you sprinting towards the water or a different direction? Uh, no, I'm going to head in the other direction. Well, wait, 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 wait. My no Where's Solst again? My knowledge as Archifint. Solst is... You know that Solst is, Solst is west. West of, of the uh, Red, Red City? City. Oh. Yeah, very, very far west. And, and a little bit south as well. And the water is to the west. That's the west coast, where the water would be. Um, the, wa the water is up up top. There's, there's actually a bay right right above this the uh, the city that the Sol the Sol is right in that bay. All right. I'm going to head away from the water. And just in the opposite direction. I'm not exactly sure where I'm going, but I'm just going to start sprinting in that direction and see see how that works out. Okay, so you just sprint through the city to looking for any way to go. Your goal is to get out of the city. Yeah, pretty much at this point, just to get out of the city. Okay, yeah. so you just you, so you pick a direction just to get, get out of the city and you start running through. Uh, going back to everyone inside. Um, let's go with you first, Brooke. What do you want to do? Um. I have a quick question. If I have three actions, right? Do I, can, am I allowed to do two of them at once, or no? I have to wait. The turn. You can only, you can only do so much on a turn, obviously. So if you're casting a okay. spell, that's all you can basically do. You can attack. Okay. You can cast a spell. You can, you can also move on the same round as well. Okay. Um. Thank you. So he's still distracted. I run towards the balcony. Oh yeah, this is the only round where he's like, he's his his right now. He's taking the sword and he's putting it down to the ground, like. But by by magic, you, uh, you you take this chance to run across towards the balcony. Uh, mm -hmm. Do anything else? Or just running. Um. Well, while I'm running, can I use no, my you can get a, point? You can you can have a full run, or oh. you can not run, not do a full run and just just move your moving rate. So if I move at my moving rate, I can do a spell. Yeah, but you you won't you won't make anywhere near the distance. Depends what you want more. Oh, I see. Okay. Um. I run to the balcony. Okay, you take off to the balcony. Scro? Latorius. Um, I'm still right next to where that wall of force was leading into the hallway, right? Yes. Can I check that again at this moment? Uh, yeah, you check it, you put it, you put it up, and you see that it's still there. It is still there. Mm -hmm. All right, I follow Abyssia then. Okay, you run across to the other side. Uh, Reed? Steve, you got... All of you, get out! Full run with the intent to grapple the mage. Use that as a distraction, allowing them some form of escape. If he locks them down, we're done. Okay. Um, you see, you see, Lillian and uh, Sir Fluffle uh, 
basically are making their way around and following you guys around. They um, they stay by you uh, pretty much, Steve, to help you out. And um, Lump follows you, uh, Abyssia. And, and that is it. A lot of you guys are going towards the um, the balcony. Um, let's see what he does. Hold on a sec. Okay, so you see the um, the Grand Wizard takes the sword from the air. He stopped it before while you while you guys are running across. He yeah. takes the sword, flies it down to the ground, and um, you see him go, put his arm up. <sighs> he teleports, and all of a sudden he's out you know, on the balcony in front of anyone who's walking up to it. Brooke, you'd be the first one to see him. Okay, so I use my fire breathing. I breathe fire. I get one time a day. I okay, you engage the wizard. Yeah, do it for Yeah. So that's three to six. Uh, so that's 16 damage. What's your attack? Oh, I'm sorry. 20. Not natural. Not natural? Yeah. Okay, you hit him with fire. <sighs> onto him, it seems to have very little effect. Okay. Both stories you got. No, I cry. I just cry. Okay. <laughs> Scott Weber, thank you for 500 stars and 100 stars. Uh, when we get back to everyone else where Lump is, Lump screams, Lump casts Entangle, leaps at the Head Wizard, grapple, attack 9, tries to inflict as much damage as possible. Okay. Um, so we're going to let go, but uh, right before that, uh, Lump screams, Lump casts Entangle! Big bird! Ah! He runs up to the <laughs> to the wizard when he, when he teleports in front of you. Go ahead, Scruff. All right, so I'll run up. Can I attack him on this round? I see Abyssia attacked him. Um, um, I'll give you um, I'll give you a charge. He basically teleported in front of her. So you're you're behind. You kind of speed up and you uh, go to meet him with your your weapon. Okay, I rolled a twenty-three. Twenty-three. Yeah. Uh, twenty twenty-three is a hit. Roll for damage. Oh, very nice. Uh, I got max damage here. Uh, that is 15. Got it. We have an axe. Yeah. Sword. Axe. Okay, you, you take you take the axe. You you swing. Um. You come down his arm. You kind of like skin the side of his arm. Uh, he kind of moves out of the way. You shred a part part of the the cloth of his rose, which you see immediately. Uh, comes back together like men's and you see him he's like grab his arm and um well then you'll see what happens next in a second yes. uh reed what do you want to do uh picking up the sword how uh, far away am i within running distance of the wizard now so he's he floating the, in the air outside the, the balcony he's not floating in the air he's just okay. on the balcony and there's your sword is in a different area from where the wizard is now uh, first action, distract him again. Give them an opportunity to attack. Take out the only dagger that I have. Chuck that uh, thing towards him. Um, that's going to be 22 to hit. Okay, chucking the dagger chucking the dagger in is going to be, you know, it's risky because uh, both of them are in front of you fighting him at the balcony. Okay, any negatives then or uh, uh, anything else? Yeah, the bad would be that you'll, you'll throw the dagger right into Scrooge's back. No, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm at a modifier. <laughs> like, what's the DC I need to achieve here? I, I, it, I mean, if it's if it's that significant, I don't want to hurt uh, anybody, you know. It's a, it's a twenty one, but um, you think that you think that the the, the throw is too risky, uh, okay. but you can you could definitely go for it. Would you achieve? Uh, I got a fourteen plus eight to uh, twenty two. Okay, so normally that would be a hit, but because okay. of uh, getting by it and you're giant just for them, it's it forces it to be a miss. Okay, all right then. All right then, that's fine. In which case, then, um... Lily, Lily, and I asked you because says you're okay. Should we, should we run in and help them? I'm fine. You two, go take care of him. Distract him. Make sure that they can get out of here. They need to go take care of the necromancer. We're staying here if we need to. Make sure that they exit out. I'll go grab my sword. I'll join the fray in a moment. Okay, Lillian and Sir Fluffle, the uh, the it was the owl. I forget what he was. Uh, the the beastborn run into to help out everybody else. Uh, let's roll for um, Lump. Lump gets in with a 19. Or is it, oh, he's trying to grapple. So it's a, it's a plus nine for the grapple. So it's a 24. Okay, so Lump. Uh, so Brooke runs up. The uh, the wizard appears in front of you. 
You fire, you you, you uh, breathe fire. It does to at least that much. Um, but at least it was kind of a distraction. Uh, Damien, from from the wizard perspective, comes out of the fire, swings the swings the axe, <laughs> cuts cuts him down the arm. The guy grabs it, grabs his arm. The torture the, the rope kind of um, uh, mends back together. Um, Dak goes flying by. <laughs> it goes off over the balcony. Uh, it feels like a very dangerous situation. And uh, out of nowhere, <laughs> you hear uh, you hear entangle. <laughs> And you see, you see um, yes. Lump, Lump jump out, and he grabs the wizard and like wraps him up immediately, and like some kind of immediately you recognize some kind of gladiator uh, move, and puts him to the ground at the very same speed as they fall to the ground, which is like, oh, he got him. The wizard disappears. <laughs> out, out oh. of the and you say, see Lump just grabbing nobody. He goes, no. Um, Rob, you're still Let's running go in. Go off the balcony. Sorry. Rob, Rob you're still running <laughs> around in the city. You feel like it'd at least be a couple of minutes running at full speed to get out um, one of the sides, which would be the uh, eastern side. Yep, I keep running. North, east, sorry, western side, western side, which is the angle, the direction towards home. But you are, you're literally a month, a month journey to for home. <laughs> I'm just looking to get out of Souls at this moment. Yeah, we'll take it from <laughs> gotcha. there. Sparky is a. Sparky is actually digging through his pockets looking for a map. I think I have a map somewhere on me. I haven't needed it in a long time. Let me look. He's uh, he's uh, behind you in his little compartment trying to figure it out. <laughs> um, uh, we're on top of the lineup. Um, you see the wizard actually is across the room. And he appears, he appears somewhat back where that, where that sword was on the floor. Oh, is he? Oh, and is he um, really? I don't know who you are, but I think it's time for you to go. You see him, see him put his arm up, and you see all the portals activate and turn into like almost like like a swirling mist. He disappears, and you all of a sudden you start feeling like pressure and air go towards all three of those portals. Can I grab the sword as I'm going back? Uh, yes, you have time to grab the sword. Awesome. Uh, I grab both. Oh, go ahead, Brooke. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You go, Steve. No, go, go, go. I'm done. This, this I'm so done. Gl- it's all glitching. I'm sorry. Okay. I grab Boltorius. You grab the Boltorius? Okay. You still grab each other. Uh, Lump comes over and grabs both of you. I grab both of you. I tangle. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I, I, uh, we gotta get off this balcony. Tie a rope. Is there, you know, can we, can we, uh, yeah, how, how, fa- how, how, uh, are we feeling the effects of this? What's going on in the room where you, we are? You feel you feel you feel the pressure of um, you feel a pull coming from okay. those portals. It's not it's not so strong just yet, but what's making it hard to move is the pressure you feel from Brooke's character <laughs> hugging you and Lump also and Lump. hugging me at the same time. Let's go, guys! <laughs> okay, I take out my rope. Let me tie we this tie rope. Our rope <laughs> we tie our ropes together. We tie it to the. Uh... Balcony, are we able to do that? Uh, you can try doing anything you want. Yes, that's what we want to do. Yeah, okay, do. okay. You uh push Brooke and Lump aside and you uh tie it on the balcony, tie the line up. Lillian and um, um, Sir Fluffles make, make their way up to you and they like hold on and like looking around. It seems to just be guarding the area and they motion to Reed to come, to come on over to get to, let's get out of here before whatever's gonna yeah. happen happens. Plan on um, if I'm not flying through the air. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you guys looking out, and you see, as of right now, as you're kind of like waiting for the rope to be tied off, which is only seconds. In, in those moments, you're looking at the devastation of the city. It looks like it looks like literally like an earthquake went through, and just like didn't destroy the city, but it, it kind of just like did damage everywhere it could. And you see, the walking tower is actually in the center of the bay, and it immediately starts picking up speed and walking, and it's actually making its way towards the red city, uh, going oh, west. Um, People are below are still in panic. A lot, probably probably about a third of the ships in the bay have been destroyed. Uh, the rest of them are, are either damaged or just like trying to pick up people out of the water. Um, the sky looks again very purple. It looks like this this atmosphere is basically everywhere. And um, now that you kind of get a second to look out, and you guys are high, uh, Rob, you don't have you're not privy to this anymore. But you guys are are looking out uh, from the balcony. You see that beam of purple light going up into the sky like the picture next to me except it's purple and just hitting the atmosphere up in the like the stratosphere like going all the way up and just like pouring out 
into it. Um, scroll, you get that rope tied off. And mm -hmm. everyone, everyone make a constitution check of 12. If you fail, you're pulled back into the portal. Made it. Uh, Made 14. It. Lump rolls a 1. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll a reroll for Lump. I use a reroll. For yourself? Okay. Uh, Rob, it's two rerolls. Two rerolls. Yeah, one reroll. 18. Great. And uh, Lump rolled a 12, exactly. <gasps> um, so you guys. You guys uh, hold on, bracing. Who's climbing over? Is anyone not climbing over the ledge, or do you have another plan in mind? I'm heading back over to them. If they're all safe, I'm good. If they're going over the balcony, I'm following and escorting and commanding uh, Lillian and Fluffle to do the same, to also escort them. Okay, so you guys are going over the balcony and um, start climbing down the rope, and the rope is 50 feet, unless you have two ropes, which I don't think you do. We had two. You have two ropes. And mine. Okay. We tied my oh, you tied both together. Okay, so you climb down. It's enough to get you down to the to the ground. And again, no one's really paying attention because of what's going on. Uh, that wizard uh, teleported out and um, seemed to be trying to pay attention to the necromancer problem rather than you guys. Uh, you definitely got the feeling from him that he, he doesn't know if you're from the necromancer, working with him, um, the Red City, or what's going on. He seems to be in confusion. And whatever was happening, whatever he planned, whatever he was going to do, seems to be ruined completely. Um, can we, so, uh, sorry, do we, can we recover that rope after we uh, get yeah. to the bottom? I have climbing gear, so I don't know if that gives me a ability to, to recover it or not. Uh, you would have to... Mm, I'll, 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 I'll allow it, and I mean, and next time you kind of have to say you do that in, not as an afterthought. But yeah, oh, okay. so we'll, I'll, 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 give, I'll, I'll give you the rope back. I'll tell you what, I'll give you guys one rope back out of the two. To be fair. Okay, one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, you guys get to the bottom. You're able to unravel one of the ropes because you're you're paying attention for it, and then you get down to the bottom. Uh, role play. What do you guys want to do? All right. Where to? I've never been here before. Uh, me neither. But we gotta get out of here. I, I think we should just head east. Uh, the tower's already going that way. What about your friends? What about everyone else? Well, I I think he would have got out of the city probably, but I don't know. You're, you're he went out the window. He went out this way, the... right? We gotta, we gotta start looking for him. Let's, we gotta go. Let's go. Uh, Tony, do I have any idea where the rest of the party is in relation to where we are now? Uh, the whole party's together except for Arky and, and Sparky. You don't know where they are. Uh, you guys are somewhere in, in, near the center of this whole city of uh, Solst. And um, they're all pretty much together, so you don't know. You don't know much about the city. You've never been here before. You didn't plan to be here. You don't okay, know so about like it. I, I wouldn't be able to figure out where Hogar and the rest of them are. Obviously, I got there to, to where Hogar is, but I don't know where that is in relation to us now, right? Um, that's underground, very far, far below, uh, basically in, in uh, almost the core of the entire planet. So that is a very different area. Got it. Okay, so nowhere accessible. Off to the east, you're saying? Yeah. Make west, it away. West, we have west, west flank. West would be home. I thought I thought we were west of the Red City. No. Solstice, Solstice west of the Red, uh, is east of the rest of Red City. Oh, it's east. I thought it was west. Okay. Okay. Right, yeah. Go. Okay, so we okay. have to head west. All right, west it is. Flank them. Safety always. Which... Let's go. We see the tower going that way, right? You said? Yes. So I would say, like, basically, let's follow the tower. Jackie Shaw, 1,000 stars, one reroll for Steve and one for Vin. Ooh, um, you, so you guys are running through through the uh, the city trying to find um, the way you can go to get through, and it's just, you're just making your way. It starts, people are starting to panic and run different directions. People are just going inside. Some people are packing their belongings and trying to get, trying to move out of the city. Um, you see, you're starting to see a lot of troops being deployed around the area, and um, they seem to be uh, like wizards, and they seem to be looking for. You're not sure looking for you, but they seem to be just maintaining order. But they're going around and making their way around the city. Uh, you guys are just trying to wake, make your way through, and then you're just trying to get out any way you can. Um, let's go back to the other group. Um, Holgar, Thistle, um, 
That's Elaine, Jacques, and uh, Finn. What do you guys want to do? All right. So we're kind of, we're kind of stuck at like a crossroads here. Um, yep. I, yeah, we, we kind of feel like we need to use the, the rod to try to close this portal some sort of way. How? I have no idea. So I will bring forth the rod and begin to pray to Alabaster inside the rod for some sort of guidance. <laughs> Okay, so you're praying. You're praying for. So what exactly, you're praying. Just don't say what you're. Don't say that you're praying. Do the prayer. Uh, or, okay. I I grab the rod and I'm like, Alabaster. How do I close this portal? The world above is being destroyed by it. Show me the way, please. Times are dire. <laughs> okay, roll a wisdom check. Hells no. <laughs> okay, do you want to re-roll that? Uh, actually, yes, I will. <laughs> okay, it is a... 17. Okay, you hear uh, Alabaster's voice. You must use the rod to close the portal. Do not worry about the tree. But there is another answer. If you look beyond what you can see. If I look beyond what I can see? Yes. Well, I'm, I'm saying yes. You don't hear him anymore. <laughs> um, so he says there's another answer if I look beyond what I can see. Uh, I'm another sure answer to what? I don't know. Um, what what's the first answer? <laughs> use to use to use a rod at, to close the portal. I don't even know how to do that. Mm. Um, um, I think we have to just shove the rod into the portal without touching the light. Like Finn said at, from the beginning. I look at the uh, the the portal. Is there any like um? Are there any doors on it? Are there any? There are no doors in the portal. There's nothing. The portal. The portal is like a vortex. It's a. It's like a fabric, in space time. It's just like okay. it's, it's there. All right. Oh, jeez. Let, let's do it, Thistle. So, what am I doing though? I don't even know what to do. What am I... <laughs> Guys, guys in the stream, uh, these players definitely need some help because uh, they're at a loss of what to do right now. Uh, just give some ideas if you got it. I think we need to what are hit, the the so we... hit the portal with the rod. So just you just want me to whack the portal with the rod? That's our only idea. Uh, uh, there's also who knows what's gonna happen. <laughs> Can it be any worse than this? Well, it could be because the rod could teleport me and the rod someplace else and leave you guys here. So yes, Master Lane, Master, Master Lane walks up to you and says, "Let me see the rod." <laughs> I, I hand Master Lane the rod. He takes the rod and he walks over to the to the portal and slams the portal with the rod. <laughs> <laughs> Master Lane. This is how we do things on Russian space station. <laughs> he's, he's like Zeus at the end of the Dark Knight. I'm gonna do what you shouldn't have done. That's my boy. Ten minutes ago. Oh my uh, god. Vin, oh my Vin, god. roll for me. 40, 40, uh, 10. 40 this is the 1 D, 1 D, 10,000 roll, guys. I'm using a system where 10,000 things can happen. This is an actual list. And um, we're gonna see what happens. And whatever happens is it. Unless he was rolls a reroll, of course, which you could, could do. But otherwise, we're gonna see what it is. right? One of 10,000 things can happen from the list I have in front of me. What number is it? It is... I feel like I Billy wrote it Han... last week. Five thousand... Billy... B... God, sorry. 5,614. 5,614. Oh. Interesting. Okay. Um, he does it. Nothing happens. I feel like I rolled that number last week. No, you didn't roll that number. 
Uh, he does it. He, he slams in the ground. Nothing happens. And uh, I think I'm. I think I'm going to activate a reroll because it's not, it didn't close. So therefore, he would want to reroll it again. Do you want one of us to re-roll it for you, or? All right. Um, yeah, Ben's re-rolling. Ben. 2,496. 2,496. <laughs> Each day, Caster insists on being called by a different name. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. Oh, As he swings, he says, call me Harry. And he swings the uh, the thing into it. I'm gonna do it. Well, I'm gonna do the last reroll. Go ahead, one more time. Three hundred twenty-five. Oh, he knew. One, three, two, five. This is it. Whatever this is, is the keeper. Hopefully, it's not bad for Lane. Otherwise, he will die before he even comes on the show. Um... <laughs> That's all right. Landfill two which should take his place. <laughs> oh my God! Uh, one of these is Caster is very susceptible to peer pressure in matters of alcohol. That's that. <laughs> it's just <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> hilarious. Some of these are ridiculous. Okay, he um slammed the uh, the the rod into the whole thing, and uh, you see um the purple light kind of like shine like and like like glimmer very very brightly, and it gets mm -hmm. better and better. It seems to kind of fill the whole room. What was that? Um, Oh, the uh, the light fills the whole room from the light going up. The whole room becomes purple. Uh, there's kind of like a blast, and you see Master Lane is like flung to the floor. Where, where's the rod? Where's the rod? Yeah. The rod's on the floor. The light is still going. I uh, I pick up the rod. Okay. Oh god. I'm gonna try. Give me the rod. Lane. Oh boy. I, I I asked I asked I asked this one for the rod. I I hand you the rod. I think he had the right idea. I run over and I whack it too. Oh, oh wait, Tom. Twenty one oh four. Twenty one oh four. Nothing happens. All right. Well, I'll, I will also re-roll then. Oh my God. Seventeen oh five. Seventeen oh five. Let's see what happens. As you as you swing it, you're like, I don't know if this works, but if we have to get out of here on foot. I'm sure I can get us out of here, because I am a master thief. Um, that's your thought. If you want to reroll, let me know. God. Yeah, I want to reroll. Okay, here's your last reroll. <laughs> oh my god. Twenty-five seventy-eight. 2578, and this is the last reroll, so whatever this is, is what it is. Okay, very interesting. See, this is, uh, the first one has been appropriate. You, uh, you slam it, you, you, you slam it in, and, um, uh, when you hit it, all of a sudden you see in the place of the light, stone. It's was all Thank the up builds as far as you can see. Uh, it, you imagine it goes on for either forever or whatever because you can't see any, any difference. Um, and it stones around the light and around with the vortex in. Everything's solid stone. Whew. Hey, Donnie, Donnie. You did it, Finn. I hope so. What, what, the, what the hell is that? <laughs> I don't know, but we're going to call it Finn's Column if it actually saved the day. <laughs> Um, I, uh, I run over to Master Lane. Is he awake? Is he conscious? Um, he seems, he's unconscious right now. Yeah. Oh. 
I give him a few. I give him a few smacks. I try to wake him up. Best of lane. <laughs> Best of lane. Get better. <laughs> <laughs> my my slap will heal you. How could she slap? How could she slap? <laughs> okay, so you start you start you start getting up. You see the uh, the stone is there of uh, the stone column is just just going up as high as you can see. Uh, Lean starts getting up, and um, you guys are just kind of recovering and trying to see what's going to happen. Uh, think about what you want to do. We're going to go to the other group. You guys are uh, been running through the the city. Um, you're starting to realize that. Um, it's basically pandemonium and kind of running through the streets is probably maybe not the best thing to do uh, to make your way through. We're just going to do a one quick roll to get through and see how you guys uh, fare on getting out. Before um, we do that, can I uh, use a, a free action to speak? Yeah, go ahead. Are we sure that we're going in the right direction? We got here through a portal. Your friends are still there and we can't run fast enough in order to get to where they are. They need to shut that. What just happened? It, does the sky change? Do we notice any changes at the moment that they do that, or in the sky? Yeah, the, uh, I don't know if what we see is tied to what they are also doing. Um, as of right now, you don't see any difference. Okay, um, us running miles and miles is not going to do the job. I have a bad feeling about this. Going out there on foot? Are you sure you want to run? The I mean, portals were beginning to open just as we went over the balcony. There wasn't much time to think. This place is a mess. I don't think he was going to send us back to wherever we were, though. I mean, a portal would be, would be mm. great, but, like, I didn't think, you know, that that was going to be uh, someplace we wanted to go. Can you give me 20 seconds? Can you give me 20 seconds? All right. Where are Tony, you down on bed, uh, nowhere, but right here. Red Knight, give me, please, some sort of guidance. Let us vanquish our foes, but you have to give me a way to get there now. All of these people here, all of these good, faithful people, please give me something. Okay, roll 20. Can I use Jackie? Thank you for that reroll for my two that I just rolled. <laughs> can I use another reroll? Because that was a two. I think my D20 is broken. You have one more you can use in it, though. Do you mind? Red Knight, I'm calling out to you. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of static in the air right now. It's uh, That's a total of 17 a wisdom check, I'm assuming. <laughs> You, you pray, and um, you wait a second, you wait a beat, you look around, nothing seems to happen. And all of a sudden, the sky does change. You see the sky starts to return to a, to a normal color. The, first, <laughs> the second thing wow. you notice, the second thing you notice is that rocks start to fall from the sky. <laughs> uh -oh. And, oh. Oh. Oh no. Uh, take oh cover God. now. <laughs> everyone, everyone, roll a de dex check. Uh, you got, you're gonna need a. It's coming from everywhere. It's, it's like trying to dodge the rain. So we're gonna make it a twenty. Uh, dodge oh my or gosh. yeah, dodge or take a lot of damage. Oh. Five. Uh, no. <laughs> Twelve. <laughs> um. Hmm. <clears throat> Okay, so if we fail, which I imagine most of you do, 34 damage. That was seven. Ooh. Ooh. Ah, it's raided rocks! Ah! Could be worse. Sorry. Could be raided men. If there's, <laughs> any, if there's any shelter, cover, or anything like that, I start pushing them towards it. Don't care about myself. Get them under cover. Something. And we all have uh, four DR from the uh, the Lions thing, right? We have that today? I think yeah, it was. don't forget about that. Uh, yeah, you have four DR. That's right. Four from DR, the, everybody. That's that's from the uh, Dwarven King's uh, enchantment. Right, Dwarven. Ooh. Sorry, yeah, Dwarven oh, okay, King. So we take four off. Take four off every time we take damage. Yes. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, are we in cover now? Uh, yeah, you guys, you guys uh, manage to take cover in like a nearby building, and um, it's just rocks falling instead of like rain. 
What what do you want to do? Running's not a good idea, and I don't know what just happened, but thank you, Red Knight! That's, I'm assuming... I pray I did something right. Guys, I'm sorry know. that I've not been able to... No, it's not your fault. Thank you. We're in this together. All right, well then let's do something together. But right now, running through a city, we need a better plan. We're never going to get to where your friends are, and who only knows what all of this means. I've lost some too. We can't go down like this. I fine? agree. I mean, this city is full of wizards, but I don't think anybody's going to help us. Yeah, uh, wizard versus steals and well, all right. Well, he did disarm me. All right, fine. This However, city's, this city's full of wizards. That's probably full of portals. Also, maybe we can at least seek some shelter and possibly come across another portal. Tony, are there any? Is there anybody running around in like wizard type clothing? A lot everywhere. You come here. Boom. Pull one okay. close to me. Okay, you kid, you kidnap a wizard off the street. <laughs> yep, kidnap a wizard. Um, straight help, up. Help, I'm being wizard napped. Wizard napped. I'm being wizard napped. Anyone? Listen, listen to me. It's raining rocks. Portal Hello, I'm, out I'm of Gorga the city. Made of rocks. Portal, the portals out of. <laughs> straight up, man. Portals out of the city. Anywhere, anything. Uh. Well, Christmas. You know Christmas check. Screw it. I'm using intimidation. Um. Oh shit! Oh, oh yeah, I, I assumed you were ready. I rolled a one, so so just for see how his morale 26. is about this. Twenty six. Okay, so he completely breaks down. Uh, it, it, he's like it's raining rocks outside. He goes, I don't know who you are, but um, just let let me be, because whatever you want to know, I'll tell you. There's, it, there's, there's, yes, there are portals. It's it's so. Of course, there's portals. Great, you lead us to one. Reach in silver here. Lead on. A silver. It's it's uh, a month's wage, man! Come on! It's raining rocks outside. I'm All not right, going fine. out there. Two silver. Let's go. He throws a silver on the ground. He goes, no! I'm not going out there dying How for about... your portal. Can he just... Yeah, here's a gold piece. Okay. I got a gold piece. How about that? I don't want money. It's raining. It's raining deadly stones. All right, I'm switching. I'm not going there. <laughs> I'm switching to okay, persuasion. Okay, I sing him a, I sing him a persuasion. I, I persuade him with my music for the song. Go ahead. To take us. Okay, ready? Yep. Oh, is it of old? You don't know what's cooking. Take us out where those stones all falling. Cause we <laughs> gotta get booking. Open up the portal, you see. And you could be a singer like me if we go away to a land of the music and where everything's cool. Get out of here! I would, I would die for that song. <laughs> <laughs> and a gold roll, roll D20. D20. Because we check. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, and my six. Oh, 14. Okay, so um, he says, he goes, he goes, your song is very beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> but. And. <laughs> I'll tell you where the portal is, but I'm not going outside. Okay, uh, that's uh, where's, where's the portal? In the keep, there's portals. Um, there's ones that all, all the, uh, the, the, the guards use. Uh, there's also um, an area in the center of town, um, in the, uh, literally in, in, the, in the, the, the city square, there are uh, portals that go to all different parts of the Archmage's Empire. He goes, if you go there, and if you had one of the wizards help you to portal you somewhere, they would do it. If they would allow you to do it. It's the best I can do. I'm not going out there, though. I appreciate your help. You are about to save many, many lives. Thank you. All right. Who knows where he's talking? He, goes, it's not. he points at where it is. He goes, just follow the main road. Hang it, hang it left when you get to the, the fork of the road. That's there's it. A, there's a suggestion in the chat that we use him as an umbrella. Um, a paladin <laughs> is not going to use him as an umbrella, so... <laughs> <laughs> wow, Stai. <laughs> Try dodging. Uh, step outside. Martin says, can Brooks sing her Earth song and change the rocks with It's Raining Men? That's better? Ooh. <laughs> What about it's raining wizards? You can get a lot of them to die that way. <laughs> That's not how the song goes, though. Oh come on! Yeah, come on, it's Earth song. It's not. It's not Vinnie makeup song. 
<laughs> he is <laughs> falling on my head. <laughs> there you go. What, what um, do you guys want to make your way? Do you guys want to make your way to where he was directing? Yes. Okay. Uh, All right. You guys, you guys uh, make your way. Well, you're making with the rocks. That's the choice you're making. If you don't want to do that, let me know. I want to also, see, want to see even if answer. we find the portal, we're not going to find anybody to take us through, are we? Wait, can we find something that we can hold over us, like a door or something? Can we um, pull off its hinges? <laughs> yes, you can pull a door off its hinges if you uh, find a way to detach good. it. I'm really strong. No, it works well. <laughs> Shields. <laughs> I'll, I'll assist her idea, sure. Okay, you start breaking down. Uh, someone comes up to you and like, this is my house. He goes, why are you taking my, my door? I because need a door. we can't use you. Just we need this more than you. Yeah. Okay, you... <laughs> And what is this quest turning into? What are you... <laughs> you guys rip the door off its hinges. You break the door down. The family's just looking at you. And uh, you have one door. I'll say you can fit two of you. Uh, you're going to have to go down the alley and rip off the doors off the, uh, the nearby buildings. Sorry, family. You live in the wrong city. Yeah. Door inspector. Okay. I, I, I give them all some okay, so listen. and silver. That's... <laughs> So you all take you take doors off. Everyone take uh, nine damage because that's what you're gonna take while you're you're trying to out get the doors. That's just the um, the general damage you're gonna take. And you guys start making your way down um, towards the center of the city with doors blocking the stones that are falling from the sky because um, of the rod hitting this this light. Um, you guys uh, roll a d20 three times, everybody. If you roll a one at any time, you um, the rock breaks through the door. Shatters the door, and you're gonna get gonna get a pail with a lot of rocks, possibly to your death. Seventeen, 20. eight, seventeen. Six. No ones, anybody? Seven, seven, ten. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Those sevens um, look like ones too for a yeah. second. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you make, you're making you're you're just making your way. Um, Rob, roll d twenty. If you roll a um, fifteen or above. It'll be uh, nice and easy here. Rob, can we hear you? I don't hear you. <laughs> you can read all IT. Rob, we can't hear you, I think, if you're speaking. Can you hear me? There we go. Nope, now we can. There he goes. Yeah, we hear you, Rob. Go ahead. Okay, uh, nine. 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 Okay, Rob's. So Rob, you are your head. You start to reach the outsides of the city, and uh, I feel like you've made it. And all of a sudden, out of the sky, uh, the per sky goes uh, less purple, less purple. And all of a sudden, rocks are falling from the sky, literally everywhere. Unreal. Yep. And I'm still, Rob. I'm still <laughs> within the city limits. You're at the end of this uh, edge of the city. Um, rocks are falling. Um, all right. I'm gonna. Uh, is there anywhere edge of the city? Is there anywhere to take cover? Any sort of uh, anything uh, to take cover? Yeah, I mean, you're actually able to to bypass some of the damage because you're in a, a giant metal suit. Um, yeah. But you um, you get into a nearby building, you take cover, and I'm just gonna do minor damage to you. A second, you take nine damage also. Uh, your, your suit gets uh, chinked up a little bit. Um, Sparky's in the back of the suit, just kind of taking uh, um, taking cover back there. What do you want to do? Okay, so right now we're just in some building wreckage, watching the stones fall. Yeah, pretty much. Do I see? Does, do they seem to be falling endlessly? Like I look into the sky, it's just like literally like raining it's, stones. It's literally raining stones. Yep. Um, all right, I'm just gonna hold up then. Let's, let's just hold tight, Sparky, for a little bit. Maybe this will pass. Oh my god. It's raining stones. Yeah. I picked this all once. It hurt. Well, well, let's just hold tight. Uh, this will <laughs> end soon. We can get out of here. Okay. Uh, we're going back to, um, Thistle. Findalar and Hogar, what are you guys doing? 
All right. Um, okay. Well, the light stopped. That's good. Now, how do we get out of here? Oh, uh, the portal's open. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a good, good point. Are the portals open? Um, the portals are. The portals are still open like they were before. Yeah, nothing's changed. What is behind them now? Uh, it's the same thing. It's you, you. You can recognize a couple different things. You see a sky. You know, you can see vague different things. But you can't see much. It's really, um, really like a luck of the draw. Do we see a throne room or no? Um, no, you never saw the throne room. It's not an easy thing to see because of how it goes to the portal. So again, you can't see, you can't discern anything. All right. Uh, can we, is can there we any... actually see what's there or is it like still all hazy and blurry and we can't make anything out? Still a hazy. Everything is hazy and blurry through the portals. All right, so I, so I turn I turn to the party. I'm like, all right. So obviously this guy had portals that led to some place, right? So where where would his portals lead to? Let's think about this. Um, where did he have access to? We know he had access to, um, obviously, the archmage and the queen because he was allied with them, right? So maybe he had portals to them. Did he have a portal to? Um, the sunken city was that one of his portals? Yes, because it went to the tower, right below. Correct. Well, the, the queen was there. The queen was where? The, the sunken city. The queen's fort. No, no, I know, but the the portal that we the the teleportation portal that we went through in the sunken city brought us to the the pyramid below ground, right? Yes, very much below ground. Okay, so we know he had access to the Archmage. He had access to the Queen. He had access to the Sunken City. Where else would he have access to? Where is this forest? We keep seeing this forest. Where is that? I don't know. There might be any place where he might have a temple. Ooh. Or or maybe it's a place that he's attacked or had spies going to. Or So let's see. Where did the Archmage and the Queen attack that were woods? The Elven, the Elven City? Where else? I don't know. Um. Okay. I think we're just we're just guessing here. Who knows? I, I'm just I'm just looking for a hint that like I don't want to walk through a portal blindly and end up across the planet someplace else. I mean, we know our friends oh. went into a portal that leads to a throne room, but we haven't seen a throne room. Uh, I, it's bad enough that we're down here, and they're up there. God knows where. I mean, obviously the throne room couldn't have been the Red City because he's never been to the Red City. Did it look like? Did it look like Aragon's throne room? I mean, we've seen it, right? Hogar, did it look like it? Well, I I didn't see it. Only Abyssia could see what was inside the portals. She could see it very clearly because of, um, I think the oh the because of the crystal that she had Okay. Yeah. Um, um, what about this? If we go through the portal with the forest, maybe that is the elven forest. And if we go there, we can use our powered up rod to heal the tree. Well, and that... maybe that will close some evil portals. Well, that, that that's what I was thinking. I'm hoping that the portal to the forest is the portal to the elven forest where we need to kind of go. Um, yeah. As you guys are sitting there, you see the the stone begins to rumble. Rumble. We'll start shaking. The stone tower. The stone tower that of light. <laughs> All right. So this ain't holding it in. <laughs> this ain't permanent. I'm gonna give um, you. Uh, you guys can tell it's probably gonna explode in about ten seconds. I'm gonna give you a countdown of ten. Tell me what you want to do. To the forest. Uh, to the forest. <laughs> Let's go. Everyone, <laughs> yeah, through the portal I, to the forest. I get the rod. I'm just kind of like, I make sure it's sheathed nice and tightly, and I'm holding on to it as I run. <laughs> okay. Through the portal. You guys are run to the portal. Um, everyone just kind of kind of follows your lead. You guys Mr. go Lane through. Us, right. You guys go. What? Mister Lane, he's with us. Yeah, yeah, he's up. He's okay. been. He's been ever since he came out of the portal. He's just been like days and like trying to recover. He's been through a lot. 
Uh, so he's not like he, behind is what I'm getting at. Uh, you you guys go through. Um, the portals actually seem to be starting to to. Uh, not, as you know, they're always in flux. Um, so you guys all hurry through. You guys go through the portal. And um, when you go to the other side, Vin roll a perception check. Uh, 16. Okay. Uh, you guys go through the portal. Um, you look around. You're in. You're in some sort of um, um, forest. Behind you, you hear an explosion of rocks, and the portal closes. At that second, at that second, you get a terrible feeling. Now I'm not talking about magic. You get a terrible feeling in your stomach. Like you did something very wrong. A terrible, terrible, terrible feeling. It's, 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 it's kind of like when you leave your house and you leave like something on. You're like, I, I, something is wrong, but I can't remember what it is. And that is what you get right now. And I'll give 100 spirits points to the person who uh, figures it out. Uh, well, the, obviously, the, the beam of light is probably still active, right? Um, well, go ahead, Dan. Was the whatever the spell <coughs> was, or the the light turning to stone, was it a temporary spell? The light turned to stone. Uh, what it did is it turned all the light that was there to stone. So it's it did it did like you. It kills some of the stone, but then any light below it came back and it renewed. Um, you'll probably see the text of that in a couple seconds, but it's not something much worse just happened. Did the red city just explode? Say again? Did the red city just explode? No. I have, I Did have they leave five. someone behind or something behind? Oh. Uh, I, have, I have the oh. rod. You leave reach for the rod. The rod is not with you. <laughs> I was holding onto the rod as I ran through the portal. You did. Oh, remember? Oh, oh no! You can't, you take can't the rod go through pool. portals. No. We've gone through portals uh, before with the with the rod. The, the no, you went you went through the you went, you try to teleport once with the rod. And the rod stayed behind. You learned you can't do it. And then the only reason you were able to teleport the rod around when it wasn't charged. All right. Oh, so. Where we... Ah! <laughs> where, 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 where. Hold on, wait. Is... Classic. Okay. So. Sexton goes, called it. And Lauren Hicks goes, oh my god. Classic dog. Uh, Ani said, Oni says it was charged. Right. That's why it was charged this time. <laughs> okay. Oh. Oh. So if the if if everyone is is confused, it, it, as we learned, as if the rod if the rod is ever powered up, um, it cannot it cannot be um, teleported. It's it's part of this the part of the the uh, effects on it. It can't be discerned. It can't. It can't. You can't discern its location. You can't. Uh, can't be the target of spells, and it can't be uh, teleported through. When the rod is empty, when all the power is gone and re and removed from it, then you can teleport around because literally it's it's nothing to do so. But when it has the soul, light, and all that stuff in, in it. It's not able to be teleported. Um, oh man! So what I do is I I just stand where we came through the portal. Right. Yeah. Um. I kind of, I'm hoping that the portal fluxes back. I'm just gonna wait. <laughs> <if the portal laughs> reopens. Okay, you guys, uh, you wait with him. Sure. Um. Did you role, role play to them? That did you left it? Left it. I don't think you guys role played it. Um, Finn. Finn, I think I have a problem. And I, then, then you're muted. Yeah, Tom, you're muted. Yeah. Can't hear, can't hear you, buddy. Unplug your mic and plug it back in. Talk to Hogar in the meantime. Right. Uh, Hogar, I think we have a problem, buddy. And I go to reach what? for the rod, and I'm kind of like, yeah, there's nothing there. The rod is gone. Um, it appears so. 
I don't what think we're going through the portal with us. Oh no. Is the... This is not good. Can, is there any way we can go back? Well, and we can't um, leave with it. I'm hoping maybe Finn can message Tomb Mage now that we're topside. Maybe he can grab us wherever we are, if he knows where we are. Uh, if that's the case, then we can go back through the portal at the sunken city and potentially go back. But then... Um, or we can stay here. I mean... Okay, guys. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm jump in here. So today, everything, just so you know, starting with the guy, the fact that you guys left the portals and split the group, it's just been getting worse and worse and worse and worse. <laughs> and I have so now, now you guys don't know where you are. You don't have the the rod. Uh, the neck. I'm not. I'm not telling you what's happening in the red city. But if either group, just declare it now. I'll probably have about 20 minutes left. If either group does not come up with a plan to get back into the storyline immediately before the end of this, about 20 minutes, I'm going to move forward the quest by uh like a month where evil is just winning and winning and winning and winning so just so you know um we're gonna go back now to the the other group um the other guys you are running through the city with doors over your head and um kind of like the forest we're gonna say you get a very bad feeling right now like like something has just went wrong but you're not sure what as if, as if thousands of voices just cried out in terror um <laughs> Uh, Five hundred stars from Charlie Lewis uh, says, "I need a forest queen for guidance, please." Asai uh, Saba says, "Can they use that handy dandy Harry Potter spell and yell, Akio Rod?" I don't know that one. Um, so uh, you guys are running through the streets uh, with the doors, and um, no. making no. your way. To... Hey Tom, you're making you making your way to the center of the of the city, and. Um, you guys all roll roll checks. You guys make your way to make your way to the center of the city, and um, you see there's, there's like a circle of all these are these gateways that they use, and there's probably about like 24 of them all in like a giant circle. Um, but there's wizards all around the place. There's probably about a couple hundred wizards. It's almost like they're on standby to use the portals to to go somewhere. It looks like it looks like they're following some kind of protocol. What yeah. do you guys want to do? Uh. Where do these portals lead? Uh, are you asking like a citizen? Are you asking a guard or no, whatever? I'm, I'm, I'm asking one of the wizards who are standing by. Yes. They leave wherever they tell us. Don't worry about it. Get the, get the uh, cover. Right. Through one of those portals, hopefully. Yes. Where, we, where do we need to go? Who are you talking to now? The group, right? Yeah, I'm talking to the group. Yes, yeah, you've got a good brain when it comes to these things. You were able to identify where they were going first. So, what are you thinking? Oh, I think that was just a fluke. I got a little lot of oxygen back there, but okay. Um, I look into. Can I see into the portals, Tony? Like I see what what goes where, or that's not. Uh, you see the portals. You could tell from now, from your limited but starting experience of the portals, that basically the portals aren't active yet. And you see there's a couple of wizards, almost like captains, that are walking around the area. And it looks like they're on call. You get the sense that in case they need to be sent somewhere, they're going to go. They're going to leave. They're going to teleport. They're going to go. Um, but all the portals don't seem to be actively connected to anything. They've clearly restricted access. No citizens are going through of, of any type. And uh, they're pretty much guarding all the portals. Okay, looking around at all the wizards, do any of them stick out to me as far as, uh, like, some of them have a little bit of the white light showing through. Do any of them have any kind of? Um, no, no, nobody seems evil here. Uh, it's just okay. the, that this is the city state they belong to. So it's, it's almost like the, the ancients when they fight. You guys, obviously, the archmage is is evil and the tensions. They believe something very different than you, but the people don't seem to be inherently evil. Okay. Not to say that you don't see, like in real life, you don't see a person here who is darker than another person who is more evil than another person who is better than another person person you do see the variances but inherently you don't see anybody um stand out in a very good way or a very bad way or anything like that i'm gonna take a chance here abyssia 
Do you think that any of them could be swayed? I do. And here's how. I only have two spell slots left for the for the rest of the mission. How Say it in DD terms. No. I'm going to mimic the um, Archmage's voice. And... Which Archmage? Um, well, no, who, who was the, the wizard in the tower that I... The I Grand Wizard? Okay. The the okay. Grand, uh, I'm going to mimic his voice. And he... He uh, calls the wizards from the gates. Um, I don't think you'll be able to do the mimic. The mimic uh, works because you do it the next round. You'd have to have learned it. You hear it, you mimic it. You use a one-off, or you tend to learn it, keep it in memory. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, are you, are you trying to, like, just mimic his voice? Are you, like... Yeah. You're, you're not actually trying to, like, cast a spell. You're... No, no. No, if, if it was a spell, it actually would be... It would work. Because the, the spells work that way. For her ability. It's it, like, yeah, that, that's voice. what I'm trying to figure out. Well, it just says I can copy someone's voice with varying degree of accuracy. Right. The mimic, sp the mimic spell can do that, but you have to do it after. No, but that's... Okay. Are we talking about the separate ability? The mimic yeah. won't work. The mimic has to be mimicked. So it's got to be something and you mimic it. Yeah, that's... What, what's, your, what's, the, what's the other thing that you have? That's different from the spell here. I, I Down here I have... I can mimic the language, mimic the voice, mimic class or race, or mimic power. So it's, that's... That's, if it's part of mimic, you have to, it has to happen in front of you, and then you copy it. Okay. Oh, the the wizard having spoken isn't good enough for that. Wait, but I have, but but then how she doesn't I, have a. When I, I'm then sorry. When I hear someone else speak that I want to copy their voice, I have to say I mimic, I mimic them. You have to try, try attempt to learn it. You're watching it. Your whole ability as the bard in the audio dungeon is that you can check something out. You can tr you can you can pay say I'm trying I'm watch actively watching it. You're learning it. And then you attempt to put it in temporary memory, and then you make a roll to say, "I'm going to try to try to put it into long-term memory and keep it as part of my songs, or I'm just going to throw it out and try to use it." Okay. That's how your your whole your whole system works. Okay. So, do you think any of these people could be swayed? I don't know. More importantly, where are we going to go? We can't ask them to send us to, you know, some place, a city that's friendly to us. We're gonna have to go to some place, you know, neutral. You have a point. You have we, a point, my friend. You know, uh, we need to go to a neutral place. Some, something. Um, do you want to go back to where your friends are? No. No. It is not a neutral place. We don't even know exactly where that was. I'm well, thinking, the only like, in place was the forest. We know what the inside looked like, but I don't think we knew like where that was. If I would so. go anywhere, it would be the forest. And I don't know if that's one of these portals would take us, or, or which forest it is. We can certainly ask right. them. But it's better to be outside than inside. Love one, go home. I know. Yes, love. we do too. But we're out of options, my friends. <laughs> Lillian uh, says, we need to get back to, to the to the Red City immediately. We don't know what happened with everything that has been that has done with the Necromancer. If you think you could get one of these wizards to give us a portal to the Red City, I'd like to see it. Well, <laughs> excuse me, sir, if you don't mind. As you start talking to him, you see that all of a sudden the rocks dim out. They start falling, and it ends. And you're able to put the, your doors down. It wasn't... Huh. It wasn't it, it was adorable, but now it's over. That's, oh, <laughs> you just did that, didn't you? Uh, excuse me. Um, you see, all of a sudden, the, the light in the sky becomes purple again, and the sky just becomes that, that color, becomes thick again. And you hear that tone. And the what portals haven't changed. Ooh. The portals have changed now. Go ahead, Steve. All right. You there. So you're understanding that the that necromancer is having an effect on your uh, city here, right? I don't know anything about the necromancer. I'm just waiting for orders, sir. Get to one of the buildings. Ah, uh, it's going to be through that. Can you take us out to the Red City? Can you open up a portal to the Red City? I can't allow any of you to go into the portal. 
I'm sure you can. I cannot, what? sir. I do not have the authority. I Please leave the area. Is your authority on the side of good or evil, my friend? Because if it is good, then you won't want to see people die. And I go where the Archmage leads. I understand that. And right now the Archmage is heading to the Red City. Is he not? Was not a siege laid against the Red City by the Archmage? Were not the towers there on the outside gates? And the and what of it? And what of it? Send us to the Red City. Why do you want to go to the Red City? Because I'm being, I'm being very persuasive with the 27. <laughs> you rolled? Did you roll? Yeah, I actually I actually got a natural 20, and I have a plus 7 for uh, per, uh, oh, nice. persuasion. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Right. 20! Natural okay. 20. It's because... the only one I got so far, guys. <laughs> okay, so what he done? So the high, I'm going to award you the highest victory at, at this point that I can award you since you're talking to our, like a soldier, the wizard, but he's a soldier amongst everybody else. And he goes, okay, listen, I'll get the captain. You can talk to one of the captains, and if they let you through, it's up to them. You're a good man. Thank you for that. He walks, he walks over and get, grabs one of, the, one of the captains. Now, just to, just to briefly just, just re-describe this area, is remember, there's about 24 of these portals, these gateways all around this area. It seems to be a center of the city. Um, you're noticing now that it seems like the city and other cities that are loyal, city-states that are loyal to the Archmage, can travel freely between each other um, because pretty much the Archmage's wizards have free reign and complete control of pulling around, and that's kind of like their, their, their thing. The only other wizard that's able to do it um, is Two Mage, which is on the Red City side for anyone who gets confused by that. Um, so all these wizards are packed around it as like troops, like they're going to send them somewhere. Um, and you see there are about three captains of these wizards that have like um, robes that kind of dictate they're of, of a higher uh, rank or something like that. And you see um, one of them walks over. It seems to be an elf or half elf. And he, he comes over and um, he's brought over by the guy that the wizard you just talked to. And he talks to the group. Yes, what does he want? I only have a moment. I understand that there's a lot of stuff going on here. We need to get to the Red City. Lots of reasons behind it. No time to explain. Can you do it? Not without an order sheet. I understand that. Where do we get the order sheet? Are you a part of the military? Oh, I am part of a military. Oh, yes. What order? What legion? What legion? I come from the Red City, my friend. We want to go back home. You want to send us there. That's going to be a 20 on the persuasion for that one. You are of the Red City. Well, the Archmage was there, was he not? Archmage forces were there, were they not? Tony, I'm mimicking. I try to mimic his voice. I try to... <coughs> okay, you're paying attention. Go ahead, make the roll. Paying attention. Four. Four, five, six. Oh, four and a four to D6. Uh... <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's right. You need only a four or five, six to, to get it on a D6, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you, you have his voice a temporary in your in your head. Um, hold on one second. He walks, he walks over to um, one of the other um, captains, says a couple of words, and, and points out, points a couple of things, and then uh, walks back over to you. Okay. And, a, and a couple of things be them? <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in a couple of in a couple of moments, you see a lot of the wizards surrounding you, and all oh. of them either have weapons up or hands up on you. And he's like, "You will relinquish, you will relinquish all of your weapons, armor, and anything that might be of a threat to the Archmage City of Solst, and I hereby take you into custody. I don't know how you got here, but you will not be going through the portal back to the Red City, my friend. Hand over your weaponry. You're you're." You guys were surrounded by a couple hundred wizards or just moving like a mob around you. Unless you have some brilliant idea. I, you have to get me you can get I out. Say, Go for it. I say, excuse me, excuse me. We're, we're on the same side. You're, you're misunderstanding. We're on the same, same side, sir. We were in the Red City. We came from the Red City. From within your walking tower. Your Tower of Salts. We came from the room. What are you saying, girl? Are you a wizard? 
You are part of the forces. You were born here in Souls. Therefore, you have magic. Show me some magic. Where is the magic you have? Funny, because in our ranks, I do not see warriors. If, in fact, I've never seen a warrior like this before, except from the Red City. And he confirms you're from the Red City. And now you want to speak other Boy. that I, have, I say that I put you into custody. Show me the wizardry that you have learned in the schools of Soulst, girl. Pardon me. I don't, I'm sorry. Maybe I didn't explain. I shall not pardon you. I shall bring you to the dungeons, though. Take them away. You see, you see all, all the wizards come in and start grabbing you guys. Who resists? If, if, if you resist, let me know. Oh, yes, this place is evil. It yeah. needs to die. <laughs> I shoot, I shoot. Now, you're do, gonna resist. Do, you, do you yell that? Steve, do you yell that? Well, here's the deal. <laughs> here's the thinking behind it. We have had no options other than to run around with doors above our heads because rocks are falling from the sky. We don't know where we're going. We have no exits or anything. This is a point of absolute desperation. No armor, no spells. Thank you for those in the chat who have given us like Lion's Healing or what have you. That's it. Otherwise, we're going to be spending jail time. And I highly doubt that that's going to be easy to get out of. I understand that there's a hundred wizards around, but you, s all right, I'll put it to you this way. The rest of you, you see knuckles get white. You know, this paladin of the red knight is not going to go easily. We <laughs> pass a glance, looks at you guys, looks at Abyssia. The first person that comes towards him, he pushes him away but stand still does not yet raise the sword. I'm looking to my comrades for uh, something. Lillian, Lillian and uh, Sir Fluffle immediately, they, they see that you're gonna fight. Uh, they, go, they, go, so they go to grab the weapons and get ready to, you can tell they're ready to help you. Um, the rest of you, let me know right. right now if you are resisting. Just tell me, first just tell me resist or go in. If you, if you give in, you know that you're, you're surviving this, this section and you're alive and you, get out of this predicament. If you resist, what, what? then we go to the next section. So tell me... Oh, I see. The dungeon? <laughs> you're, being, you're gonna be brought to the dungeon. You're either resisting or you're not resisting. Brooke, I you're shoot. up first. Three I seconds. Shoot. I Three. shoot an arrow up and I, I create a fire shield around us. Okay, so as they come into you, you go to grab your weapon, you start pull, pulling the arrow up, they rush in, and all the hundreds of wizards start to begin to cast their spells on you. Just, just to make that more clear. Okay. Is that is that what you're doing? Because it's a big decision. You if imagine I, being I, imagine I, being surrounded by imagine being surrounded by all the cops to have their guns at you, and you go for your gun and pull it out. That's exactly the situation you're into now. So just to make sure, I want to make sure you're clear before I go on to the next step. So it's, it, it, one more time, if that's what you do, totally fine. But I don't want you to tell me the, you didn't realize the situation. So really quick, I'm gonna start with a scroll first. Scroll three seconds or well, six seconds to be fair. Resist or not? Six, not five. Scroll in. Rook six. Five, know. you don't resist. Who else is there? Stand down. Steve, oh. you don't resist. So, uh, that's exactly what I say. Stand down. You will keep your paws off of me. Where I go, I go willingly. Stand down. Okay, you see all the, uh, the wizards kind of like relax a little bit. The, the situation was obviously tense. You see uh, lumps like... Uh, me no like here. Me go back to Red City. I mean, me not of Red City, <laughs> but me, me want to be tourist and see it. Because it's home. <laughs> you, Captain, if you're going to arrest us, then do it. Take us to where it is that we need to go, but be done with it already. I am tired of this place. Gladly, sir. Take them away, Red City filth. They take your weapons, they take your armor. <laughs> armor, here. Here's a patch of shirt. <laughs> and I want that little piece of shirt armor you're wearing. Give it to me. Get right here. <laughs> they take you away. Take, they take uh, anything uh, as a weapon, armor. Some people are holding it. Uh, they take you as a group back into a different entrance of that um, that fortress that you guys started in. They take you down into the dungeons. You get lower and lower and lower, and they throw you into a dungeon. And this room, it, this 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 actually dungeon area. Imagine like a um, kind of like a a circular area. I'm gonna draw a few. 
from Jorfi really quickly. Um, guys, you can role play while you're walking for a second. <laughs> How many of them are there around us? <laughs> um, it's, it's a massive, like, probably like 50 guys that take you guys away. There's 50 of them on us? All right, awesome. Wow, we're important. Okay. So, anyone been down here before? No. Well, we're about to be. Any plans? Any thoughts? Because right now, uh, I'm looking at the blood of 50 on my hands. We're screwed. That's what I'm thinking. We're not terrible. Totally. No, we're not barely screwed. I can... I still have that guy's voice. Okay, guys. Uh, take a look here. Um, this is what you see. This is the... This is... Yeah. This is the room you're in. Uh, there are a cell here, cell here, a cell here, and a cell here. They bring you through, and they divide you up into the cells uh, about half. Um, we'll say... Um, actually, they throw they throw all of you into the cells except for Steve. It's a, uh, and you, um, Paladin, I can tell your tone. Red Knight Filth, you're going to go upstairs and have a talk with us. And we'll see... How much you care about your petty, insignificant ancient after um, we're done with you. That's it. I'm done. I'm done. BAM! Right across the damn face. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. Uh, what would you roll? What your attack? Uh, I'd say a total of 20 to hit with uh, open hand. Oh, you slap him. Oh, it's straight across the face. And I put my hand back down. Okay, you slap him across the face. You leave like the, the a pure imprint of, of red. You know, it's it's it's, it's, it's what it's, the it's, red it's... knight does. Next time you look in the mirror, you're going to remember me. Take me wherever the hell you need to take me. He he grabs he grabs his face and he's like, so "You are sw bad. you are swine. I am no. Swine. I want you to know this. Oh the red God. city." is full of fools. You're talking, man. You should action first. No more words. We are men of combat. So either you come up against me or you shut your hole and you do what your masters are telling you to do, slave. Get him out of here. You disgust me. They, t they take him away. They take him uh, up to a different room down uh, one of the steps. Is who and how many? Um... I'll roll for it. I scream out, Reed, we will find you. You will live. You uh, will live. It's 12, 12 of the guys. The rest, uh, rest of them put everybody in. And then when they put you guys in, they start dispersing all different ways back into wherever they're going. Just um, 12 of them? Just about 12 guys. You don't know if they're all guarding you or just walking the same way, but about 12 are with you. Um, Brooke, um, Damien, um, are in one one cell. Um, they take the um, Brooke, Damien, and Lumper in one cell. I'm just think of the people that are there. Lillian, Sir Lillian, Sir Fluffle. Actually, Lillian, Sir Fluffle, Fluffle. They probably would bring uh, all of them with you uh, because they feel like you're. They could tell you're part of the order or whatever you are. They bring all the the paladins uh, kind of there. And am I right to say that it's it's, it's Lump, Votorius, and Abyssia left? Am I forgetting anybody? I think that's it. Yeah, because Sparky and Arky are, are together. Um, <laughs> Sparky and Arky. Um, so you're taken away. They put you into a cell. Um, I'm gonna cut off. To, I'm gonna I'm gonna go up to the other guys real quick. Um, but the last thing I'm gonna leave you guys with, as you're sitting there, you see there are uh, is someone else in a cell um, on this floor with you. And again, there's those four cells across, and uh, you see it's a wizard who's just sitting in with his arms around his uh, his legs. And just like looking at the whole thing, not really saying much, and just kind of like watching you guys. Um, he's in the cell across from you. Okay, and just to, just to make it clear again, there's no other people in, in the cells in this level. It is Votorius, um, Abyssia, Lump in one cell. There's that individual which looks like a wizard uh, on the other one. Uh, his robes are the same robes um, similar to. Um, Tom's robes. Tom, do you still have the same robes you have in the beginning? And I actually don't think so, right? Um, no, I never got any magical robes. No, the robes you started with in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, so you do have the same. What color are they? Yeah. Hold on. Um, they're blue. 
they're blue. Okay, so you see, you see, this person has blue robes as well. It kind of reminds you of Findalar, and um, he's directly across from us. Yeah, he's just kind of looking at you guys like that. Not really. Look like he's looking like he clearly sees you. He's clearly awake. He's just not saying anything. He's just watching. He doesn't know you, so he's not saying anything. Um, we're gonna go back over to the other group real quick, and this is this is it. What do you guys got got for me? This is uh, Findalar, Thistle, Hogar, Jacques, and Master Lane. Master Lane just sits down. He seems to be exhausted. Jacques seems to be frustrated. He's looking around the area. He's like kicking some rocks. And uh, role play. Jacques, I have one idea. And it's going to require your help. Your agreement. As far I cannot, as I know... I, I can't imagine what I can do here because we are screwed. We were supposed to go down into the temple. We were supposed to save the day. We uh, we left. We left the city under attack. We do not know what has happened since then. And it, to me, it looks like that all we did was go down there and maybe even help him. I mean, yes, the only thing I see is that we at least had the rod and the rod had a light into it. We could heal the tree. But we do not have the rod. We have Master Lane, which is good. But the city is probably destroyed, taken over, ruined. The sky is purple. You're what right. the hell can I do? You have a collector's coin. Use it. Get us back there. Maybe get us all together. Get get us to the rod. If it's got enough power, have it shut down the portal too. That's what I'm thinking. That's the that's only thing I got. That's where we stop for today, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching Audio Dungeon. Steve, you had a fantastic run, and you made you made for such a great story. Um, I'm excited for 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 the day if uh, your character comes back on and joins us again. Um, appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. This was so much fun. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. And thank you. Your, your audience here is absolutely amazing, and you guys are an absolute delight to play with. I love the energy that uh, that you give back. There's a wonderful parlay there. So again, thank you so much, guys. Absolutely. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Um, guys, uh, don't forget to join us on um, Dungeon Dwellers. That's our group on Facebook. Join in. A lot of cool stuff happens there. Join us at patreon.com slash audio dungeon. And go to the, the new version of the website that we're adding things daily to it. Things that you can contribute between the shows uh, during the week. A lot of people are requesting a way to get involved because they can't watch the show live. And now you can do that. And uh, it's a lot of cool, intricate things. You can tweak out the exact enhancement you want to give. It's on theaudiodungeon.com. So check it out there. And as always, the Gleam giveaway is up there. Like, subscribe, follow us on YouTube, on Twitch, on Facebook. And um, yeah, guys, thank you so much. This has been one of those episodes that like, you could tell that they're, the, the crew is absolutely in control of their actions and uh, kind of <laughs> <laughs> definitely stumped by what, what they have done. And they are on the brink of just letting the story run. I've had times before where there's been quest killers. Uh, either the party has died or the party has been made insignificant to the story, which is exactly what's happening here. And if that happens, if it comes to that, I will move the, fo the story forward by a certain amount of time that it takes them to get back into the story um, before anything happens. And if that does, that means evil goes unchecked for a while. And that would be very interesting. So we're going to see what happens next time. Tom just offered Jacques to uh, an idea, idea of using the collector's coin. But what can that do? We're going to find out next week and see what happens. Uh, so, guys, thank you again to our, our guest, Steve Krause. And uh, thank you to the Audio Dungeon crew. I'm Tony Hansen, joined by Ross Botaro, Dan Isgro, Damian Scro, Brooke Armstrong, Vinny Pro, Tom Kokoza. Thank you to the crew and the staff helping us out. Principal Todd, Justin Sarachik. Thank you to our sponsors. And we'll see you guys next week on audio dungeon That's and for those of you and those of you sticking around on, on page patreon and discord go to our discord we're going there right now to dungeon talk to talk about this crazy crazy episode where people are using doors for shields to hide themselves from stones falling from the sky that's the kind of episode this was and uh we'll see you guys on dungeon talk talking there in about five minutes thanks guys thank we'll you. see you soon thank you everybody on the front lines thank you for taking care of us thank you love you thank you we don't ever forget thank you. you thank you <laughs>